Hello, everybody. Welcome into my latest live broadcast. Today is Friday. It's the 27th of March, 2020. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I want to just, I'm actually making a couple of adjustments here on my OBS software. There we go. Hopefully everybody can see and hear me okay. I hope everybody is doing well. And we'll give a few minutes here for people to jump in and join us during today's broadcast, which if things go as I think they're going to go, uh, you might just learn something new. Today, I want to focus a little bit on AMD, and um, this isn't to bash on AMD, but it's to make you aware that when you're shopping for a CPU, it's not like you're comparing apples with apples. Well, that's not a good example. Oranges with oranges. AMD CPUs are different in other ways, as are AMD chipsets and AMD motherboards. So the motherboard, the chipset, and the CPU all require each other. And AMD's platform is rather new compared to Intel's platform, which has just been built upon and has matured over the last 10 years. Now, that being said, there are caveats, pros and cons, uh, to both Intel and AMD. Uh, there's positives and negatives. Not one chip is better all around. There's only a chip that's better for you. My goal here today is to introduce you to something unique to AMD that I think most of you are not aware of. And it's a problem that doesn't exist with Intel because everything is automated for you. With AMD, uh, it requires a bit more user intervention, not only to get it configured and set up, but to get it maintained. For example, uh, Intel's chipset drivers are downloaded automatically through Windows Update. And Intel has a free utility you can download called the Driver Update Assistant, which will sit in your system tray and alert you to any Intel devices in your computer that have an update, such as your Intel graphics card, your Intel network interface card, your Intel storage controller, etc., etc., etc. It's all in one free little utility that just runs and it'll you can ignore it and then it'll give you a little exclamation point or something down in the system tray when it wants your attention basically letting you know that there's a new update available now these updates can be critical when you're updating to the latest version of windows 10 or getting the latest windows 10 uh, security updates for obvious reasons you want to stay secure and sometimes that has issues with pre-existing drivers so the drivers are updated uh, and this is the same with AMD. The difference is that AMD, and, and if anybody knows something I don't with this regard, then please pass it along. Because uh, as far as I know, there's no way to know you're missing AMD chipset drivers, and there's no way to know that newer drivers are available through any automated process. So when it comes to AMD chipset drivers, uh, on the 19th, just uh, eight days ago, AMD released new chipset drivers. How do I know that? I obsessively check every couple weeks AMD's website by hand to look and see if newer drivers have been released. It appears that AMD releases new updated chipset drivers about every three months. Now, these chipset drivers are very important. They help with your security. They help with compatibility with updates and other software. Sometimes they add features and performance benefits and increase reliability. So I, I cannot underscore how important these drivers are. And I don't understand why there is no tool to sit in the system tray from AMD to tell me when new drivers are available. If you don't think about it and you don't check, your system could be running as a security risk or with poor performance over a free download that you have to grab. Furthermore, you have to be a bit technical to get the right driver, which is nonsense. It shouldn't be that way. Uh, I'm going to walk you through the process. I'm going to demonstrate what the problem is, and I'm going to demonstrate how conflated and confusing the problem can be to resolve when you're looking to download your AMD chipset driver. Essentially, here's a spoiler alert, all AMD modern chipsets all use the same driver, but the AMD website wants you to specify which chipset you have, which most people probably can't answer. A lot of enthusiasts can answer with no problem, but a lot of average home users would have no idea what chipset they have. But here's the thing, 
they're all the same driver, whether you're using an X570, 470, 370, uh, B350, A320, I think. They're all the same driver. No matter how you answer that question, it still points you to the same file, making that question irrelevant, unnecessary, and ultimately intimidating and confusing for people who don't know what a chipset is, let alone which one they have. Some people might even wonder, do I even have one? Uh, NVIDIA does this with their drivers. They'll ask you which NVIDIA graphics card you use when like, I don't know, 35 of them all point to the same exact file. This is extraordinarily frustrating, unnecessary, and overly technical. This is designed by engineers for engineers. That's my theory. The consumer should never have to adjust to accommodate the technology. The technology should always adjust to the consumer. Now, to NVIDIA's credit, they do have an auto detect button that you can press, and it can tell you which card you have so you don't have to enter it manually like you see me do. AMD offers no such thing. It's all manual, it's all very technical, it's for technical people, and if you're an average home user, your system may be running just fine. And the fact that you have not installed any AMD chipset driver because you didn't know to do that means that your system could be running better. Furthermore, if you did not know that AMD released an updated driver eight days ago, you could be running an outdated driver that is a security risk potentially affecting your computer reliability and at the very least may not be giving you the best performance. And then of course when you get that Windows update that crashes your computer and you're all upset at Microsoft, what may be happening there is that you have a driver, could be a video driver, could be a chipset driver, that's old and was updated so that it would remain compatible with Windows updates. And so what the end user in their ignorance does is they blame the update that caused the problem when in fact they weren't keeping their system updated because AMD doesn't allow for an automated process to make the user aware. So at least with Intel, and I'll say this about Intel, regardless that, you know, that's not all roses and sunshine with Intel, at least all of that is automated and at least the Intel driver update assistant is available to download for free and to let it sit in your system tray and, and let you know when new network card drivers are available, new of video card drivers are available, new chipset drivers, SATA controller drivers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Anything that's based on Intel in your system would benefit from the Intel driver updater. The only, the only thing is if you have a, a pre-built machine like a Dell or HP, something like that, you always want to get your drivers from that manufacturer. So I'm strictly speaking here on machines that we're building ourselves. And since there's so many pro AMD people out there being very loud and annoying, they're leaving out very technical information that you as a buyer should be aware of. And that is the AMD systems currently require a bit more hands-on maintenance to keep things updated and performing well and reliable and secure than the Intel systems, regardless of all the other benefits that AMD offers. I'm not saying that they don't offer benefits. I'm saying that that one thing is a pretty major thing to consider. Now, I want to prove it to you. I'm going to demonstrate to you a problem that you would never have on an Intel system. And I'm going to use the system behind me. That was sent to me for repair. So a lot of times people build computers that, you know, look, it, it's real easy. I'll, I'll sit here and tell you and encourage you to build your own machine because it is super, super easy to do. One of the advantages, of course, of buying a pre-built is all these drivers and everything are already done for you, but they're not updated necessarily. And again, uh, companies like Dell have their own driver update utility. So on my Dell XPS 15 laptop, I have to run the Dell utility manually, and it comes up and it says, uh, it's the update utility. And it says, hey, you know, there's a new BIOS, there's new Thunderbolt drivers, there's new chipset drivers. Click which ones you want, you select, I select all and I grab it and leave the machine alone and let it do what it needs to do. It updates its own BIOS. It does everything on its own. I go back, I check the Dell updater again. It says you're up to date, I'm happy. So I don't have to run the Intel driver utility and I don't have to worry about, you know, if it was an AMD system, those AMD drivers would be coming automatically through the Dell update. So basically what I'm saying is if you're a system manufacturer providing updates to your customers, AMD or Intel doesn't make a difference because in either case, you'd always get your driver updates through the mass manufacturer. But if you're a home builder, it requires a little bit more hands-on attention with AMD. 
And what I want to do in today's video is show you why. I'm going to demonstrate, uh, maybe I'm wrong, but I think I'm going to have a problem just installing Windows 10, grabbing all the Windows updates, and then running the Time Pilot demo. I believe the Time Pilot demo will crash. And um, the reason why I got the machine is the person who built it says from day one it's never been able to install a game and run it without crashing from Steam. And another tech that looked at it emailed me and said, look, we changed. I pulled his graphics card out, put it in another machine. There's no problem with the graphics card. I pulled his RAM out. I changed his motherboard. There's no problem with any of it. It all works fine. We can't understand the problem. When I installed the AMD chipset drivers, all the problems went away. Now, this is the events that have occurred. Now, what I'm going to try and do is recreate them live on video to make sure that there's no other uh, caveat here. Uh, Windows 10 had been reinstalled numerous times. Uh, a lot of things have changed through this diagnostic where they gave up and said, send it to carry. Usually, when you see a machine come in to me for repair, that means other people looked at it and could not get it figured out. As an update to the system that was sent to Valentine, remember I thought it had a bad power switch? Valentine's got it. It's working perfectly now. So apparently I did diagnose that correctly. Uh, we had one with a bad reset switch. That was one other people just couldn't figure out. And of course we had the one with the uh, gigabyte BIOSes allowing for a year greater than 2099 being accepted when they should not be accepted. No other motherboard manufacturer will allow you to enter a date larger than 2099 in the date field of the BIOS. Only Gigabyte does that. Now Gigabyte's been aware, uh, made aware of it. They're, they now know. And they've issued one BIOS update for the board I complained about. But it affects, as far as I know, every board that they've ever made, at least from X, uh, from Z170 forward, as far as I can tell. I don't think Gigabyte wants to spend the money. I think that they don't think it's a big deal. And I think I'm going to start looking at other manufacturers for boards because I don't like that response from Gigabyte. I expect to see a BIOS update from Gigabyte from every board they sell to address that problem, regardless of how unlikely it is that someone enters an incorrect date. The, the fact is that if you enter an incorrect date with any other motherboard manufacturer, they won't accept it. And therefore, the problem of Windows locking up and not installing would not exist on literally any motherboard manufacturer except for Gigabyte. And I talk about my loyalty to certain companies because my business is riding on uh, the quality of their product. And when a business really drops the ball big time, it's time for me to find another provider. So sometimes people say, hey, Kerry, how come you don't use ASRock? I had a really bad experience with ASRock, really bad, where they wouldn't honor a warranty and I had several customer systems all burn up, like they literally caught fire. And ASRock insisted that I was using bad power supplies when in fact all three systems had three different power supplies. They were three different customers who didn't know each other and they all three suffered the same exact failure on the board and they refused to RMA it and they refused to assist me and so I said, look, I can't run my business this way. I have to buy my customers new motherboards now. That cost me money. I don't know how much you know about business, but in business you're supposed to make money. Uh, if I didn't replace those boards, if I just told the customers, hey, ASRock's not warranting it, so I'm not going to warranty it, and even though your system's only a couple of months old, you're going to have to buy a new motherboard, uh, they would probably take their business somewhere else forever. If I was a customer, I would. So I had no choice but to do the right thing to buy my customers brand new motherboards, and I've never bought ASRock for many, many years after that, and I've started to revisit them now. Because as Gigabyte was good, now they're getting bad. They've added that mounting hole that no case supports. Now they've got this bad BIOS that they're not taking seriously, in my opinion. They're not acting quickly enough. And in fact, I don't think they're going to act on it at all. So I had issues with Asus, and I've got um, a little bit of issue with ASRock, because ASRock likes to do a lot of same things as, as Asus does with regards to like putting your first two memory sec, uh, modules in A2 and B2. It doesn't make any sense. It should be A1 and A2 or you know A1 and B1. This whole thing is designed by engineers who have no concept of how to relay things to normal, non-technical people. 
and they, they over-engineer things, and I'm not a big fan of that. And that only leaves one manufacturer left for me, and that's MSI. Or I have to sort of swallow the pill and go, look, these two things with Gigabyte uh, aren't that serious. I mean, having a mounting hole I can't use, and having a BIOS that accepts a date greater than 2099 um, isn't necessarily a, a problem that's going to cause me to lose a customer for systems that I build, but it's an indicator to me. It's a big red flag about what happens now if there's a real serious problem. Gigabyte support takes an average of two to three days to get a response. So if I have a customer right now with a Gigabyte board that has a problem, and that board is bad and I need to send it back, and I write, fill out the form with Gigabyte, I will have to wait two to three days for them to respond with an RMA number. That's too long. I should get a response the next business, the same or the next business day. There's absolutely no valid reason other than Gigabyte does not prioritize support, nor do they prioritize industry standard, and nor do they prioritize the security implications that are possible because their BIOS does not enforce the date requirements that they themselves say is there but isn't there. These are big red flags. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm trying to avoid whatever the next problem with Gigabyte's going to be because it looks like we're moving in that direction and it's time for me to now go somewhere else. So you might start seeing other manufacturers' boards. Now that's not to say that ASRock boards and Gigabyte boards are bad. It is only a business decision based on the sheer quantity, the sheer number of boards that I'm going through and how many I have to support. If you think about how many gigabyte boards, just think about this for a minute, that you've seen broadcast here on this channel, and every single one of those boards will, not, will require a BIOS update to fix the date issue, how many computers do I have to go back and revisit and apply that BIOS update to? Does anybody want to take a guess? This isn't like me sitting at home with a computer that I'm a hobbyist having fun. And who's going to do that work? Who's going to pay for that? That all comes out of my pocket. It all comes out of my, my clock. And it's not mission critical. However, as long as it remains unpatched, there could be security uh, implications that we don't know yet. And it's always possible that a customer could put the wrong date in at any time and call me for support. This would not happen if it wasn't a gigabyte board. So no matter what, I'm in a bad situation here and my concern is that it's going to get worse. Right now, it's just bad. Um, in the meantime, uh, a lot of people are working from home, and, and that's a bit disconcerting to me as well, because what I've experienced with people working from home is they don't have adequately secured computers, and they're connecting to their company's computers. In my opinion, it should be a federal law that employees working from home should have to use a computer that is provided by the employer and is maintained by the employer. And furthermore, um, the virus can go the other way. If, if my wife is working remotely and her IT department, which in my opinion doesn't seem to really have all their marbles together, uh, has a security breach, then it could impact her computer, which is on my network, which then affects everything on our system. So you better be damn sure that I am restricting her to guest network access only, so that there's no way um, a security breach will impact my ability to make a living. Furthermore, the bandwidth that she is using to work remotely isn't, I, I just don't have enough bandwidth to broadcast at the same time she's doing that. And She's using VOIP phone service that her company is routing to her through her computer, where what she does involves a lot of private, identifiable information that this microphone could pick up. She could be in the other room talking to a customer, reading a social security number or something like that, that this microphone could be picking up. How can her company allow that? The danger of placing these employees at home on their personal computers to connect to their work computer and a home where other people are using that same internet, even though they've got around a VPN, 
the idea that she is speaking and it can be picked up, you know, by somebody who's vlogging also in the same household could be a violation of both FINRA and HIPAA laws. I am telling you right now that once this coronavirus uh, issue settles down and sort of normalizes, you know, the, the, the AIDS epidemic, the HIV epidemic was, was really big like this for a while. And then it kind of settled down. We don't really hear about that as, as big of a deal now. That day will come with this coronavirus and there's going to be a ton of lawsuits, a ton of lawsuits. You watch, mark my words. And it'll be involving people working from home on home computers instead of work computers. And it'll work both ways, where those home computers infected the work computer and where the work computer infected the home computer and these computers are all networked together. And so everything on each network also theoretically gets um, infected. And now you've got to ask, who's to blame here? Employees doing the job, the employees doing what the employer wants. And then furthermore, the employer is telling the employees what software to put on their home computers. These are not the employer's computers. They don't have the right to load your computer up with a bunch of unnecessary software because their IT department uh, lacks the technical knowledge to understand how to optimize and efficiently do their job in a secure manner without loading tons of, of overlapping software, utilizing your computer's resources, your internet connection, and ultimately the performance of the machine being bogged down by ultimately what is unnecessary and redundant software. I don't want to get too much into it, but from what I saw, let's just say there was an argument involving myself and my wife's IT department, and they were upset by it and went to their boss that I had no business to talk to them. And I told them they had no business to be making changes on our computer without my authorization. So that's not good. And I think it's going to get worse. So just remember I said this, lots of lawsuits involving people working remotely from infected or damaged machines through software and vice versa. The security risks here are huge, not to mention something as simple as overhearing private information that an em employer might require their employees to, you know, talk to their clients about private information that could be picked up and heard by people around them. A lot of people are YouTube streaming. It wouldn't be unusual for both people at home at the same time how can I do my job and have her do her job at the same time? With the internet bandwidth that we have, uh, I'd be broadcasting later to wait till she's done. And that's probably for the best because otherwise, like I said, you could be hearing uh, private information, um, overhearing it because of the microphone sensitivity. And I don't think the employers have considered any of this. I think the employers are so ill-prepared that they're just, tr all they're focused on is making it work from home. They're not focused on the security and they're not focused on the potential liabilities that they're putting themselves in, nor are they focus on the risks and the damage that they're potentially doing to the home users' computers. That's why all employers should provide computers or laptops to their employees to take home. Then they can do whatever they want to them. So a couple, couple different things I want to talk about today that are unique to this uh, situation. Hopefully all you guys are staying aside and doing well. We have a good turnout here. We've got 700 people tuned in. Hey guys, did I say hello? A couple contributions came in. Let me give a couple shots out to these, to these generous folks. Let's see. Mira Ora has contributed $5. It says, hey, Uncle Kerry. Rick Hubbard contributed three pounds and Mati Yoel with $10. Heinrich Anderson, 200 Swedish krona. And Joe Bush, $7. Says, happy Friday and just a small contribution for the Uncle Kerry <laughs> stimulus. And Mira Ora again with another $5 contribution and says, thank you for reminding me to update my AMD chipset drivers. And Mati again for, with a $20 contribution says, hey, Carrie and chat, good day. And then, of course, Glenn Davies, a frequent contributor here, has contributed uh, five Australian dollars and says, hey, everyone, I built a new PC for myself, entirely inspired 
by Carrie. That's awesome. Love to hear that. Thanks to all of you for helping support the channel. And hopefully we can uh, keep each other company. Zero Courses, the AMD Adrenaline software has auto update detection and it does notify you when there is an update. So Zero Core, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's only for the Radeon graphics cards and not for the AMD chipset drivers. Can you verify that for me? CC for Tech just contributed two pounds. Thank you for that. Jeremy Kramer with $10 says, uh, Carrie, keep up the great work. Buy yourself a Coke and a Twinkie. And Thomas Beckenstow has contributed $10 as well. Thomas, I, uh, I think we're building a computer for you, Thomas, right? I was on uh, Amazon the other day, and I saw the 9700K processors were back in stock, at, back at normal prices, which is like $380 or $390. So I bought three of them because I still have three gigabyte H370, uh, what are they, Z? H370 HD3 motherboards. I still have three of those. I still have three Scythe coolers. I was just waiting on the processors. I'm also waiting on some solid state drives, some M.2 drives. But uh, I think one of those is going to Thomas, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's what Thomas wanted was like the H370, the 9700K, like a two terabyte or a one terabyte uh, Intel SSD, NVMe. Um, you know, 16 gigs of RAM or maybe 32. I don't know. We have to talk about it. Uh, but we'll, we'll, get it, we'll get it done. And then there'll be two more on top of that. And then there's another gentleman, uh, Andrew, who's waiting as well. So in the meantime, um, I, I can talk to you while this is loading. What I want to do is I just want to plug the, uh, uh, just we're going to take a brand new solid state drive. Back here, I've got the customer's um, two and a half inch Toshiba mechanical drive, and then they've got a Samsung SSD, and we're going to disconnect all of this. We don't want to use any of these drives. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this crucial drive here, and this is what I was, when I was diagnosing this machine a few days ago, uh, this is the drive I was using. I, I like to have a spare drive laying around for diagnostics. It allows me to do whatever I want to do to the customer system without jeopardizing their data. And these, you know, you can buy a, a 240 gig solid state drive now for forty dollars, thirty dollars. They're pretty cheap. Uh, right now, they're a little hard to get because of everything going on. Amazon's delivering, uh, delaying all tech shipments by thirty days. But Newegg, as far as I can tell. Everything's going out as normal. So I've been doing most of my tech ordering through Newegg because Amazon, the problem with being an everything store <laughs> is that when suddenly there's a prioritization of home goods, uh, antibacterial wipes, toilet paper, bottled water, uh, it's overwhelmed Amazon's system. Amazon's system is overwhelmed just with the home goods and therefore they have decided Jeff Bezos has decided that those home goods are far more important and critical than building a new computer or buying a computer part. So for that reason, uh, until further notice, Amazon is delaying all tech shipments by 30 days. Even with Amazon Prime, yeah, it doesn't matter. No, there's no benefit to Prime right now for tech shipments, which I, I don't know what to say. In the meantime, I had to order a headset from Newegg. It arrived in two days. So I'm not sure what the problem is other than Amazon needs to have divisions. They need a tech division or an electronics division. They need a home goods division. But because they've combined all these divisions into one roof, it minimizes costs. But then when things like this happen, uh, there's just no way, no way possible. There's any system that could possibly keep up with the demand they already had before this and then the panic buying that people are doing. And you know what sucks about panic buying? I'm almost out of bottled water. And no big deal. I can drink out of the faucet if I need to. But if I'm at the store and I see bottled water, I'm going to buy two cases. I'm not just going to buy one. Normally, I would buy one. But since it's so hard to find, I have to buy two, right? Because otherwise, I may not find it again. And then the next person goes, well, I, I better bit two or three or four. So I don't. 
And then what ends up happening is there's nothing left for anybody else. And it sucks. It just breeds hoarding. Hoarding breeds hoarding. And panic buying breeds panic buying. Like I got nothing but room here to store a bunch of water. And you know what? It's just water. <laughs> I can drink it out of the faucet. I can get a Brita filter. I get a Brita pitcher, fill it with water. And it's the exact same thing as the purified water people are buying. I buy spring water. <laughs> Let me stick my nose in the air. I don't drink purified water. I drink spring water. But all those people buying purified water, you could just, that's just filtered water. So what? Greg says, stores here limit water purchases. Yeah, I think they're probably limited to two. That's usually what it would be. They're, they're doing that here as well. And they need to. They absolutely need to. And, and I'm not going near a Costco. Oh, man, Costco is just lines. You know, you'd have thought the zombie apocalypse was coming. 3% of the population are affected by this as far as a mortality rate. The other 97% will get sick and get over it. And yet, you'd think that it was a 50-50 chance, the way people are behaving. But, you know, look, uh, certainly it, it's, it's easy to say when it's not affecting you directly. But the fact of the matter is there's damage to the economy now. And um, it's going to be very difficult to recover the damage that's already occurred. And the longer this goes on, uh, the longer the recovery is going to take. So in the meantime, do your part, stay home, watch YouTube videos. <laughs> and don't go to the store unless you absolutely have to and try and get in and out of there as quickly as you can and avoid, avoid uh, you know, things like door handles. And, and if you have to touch that stuff, then get some hand sanitizer, clean up really well. You know the, the whole routine, right? Because I, I don't need you guys getting sick. And I don't need you getting somebody else sick. Because that would just make me sick. All right, so um, I've got the video plugged in, power plugged in, switches on. Let's get the keyboard and mouse up and running. Plug that in right up here. And I'm going to need an Ethernet connection, but not just yet. I'm going to just start by installing Windows 10. Donna says, Carrie, you're my new binge watching. Right on, Donna. That's cool. I appreciate that. You know, look, I got a lot of videos. I, I, you know, if this quarantine lasts for another three or four weeks, I should be able to be caught up. So for me right now, um, it's, it's benefiting me in the sense that I can focus on getting, my, getting through my backlog. And once my backlog's caught up, I've got a dishwasher that's been sitting in my garage for nearly three months that'll probably take me 15 minutes to install. I haven't had time. So I'm hoping this is like a forced vacation. And as for social distancing, uh, nerds have been socially ostracized our whole lives. So, <laughs> it's no, my world hasn't changed one bit. So those of you who are having a difficult time social distancing, welcome to my shoes every day of my life. Now you know what it's like. <laughs> Seriously. Like I've been preparing my whole life for this. <laughs> I've been socially distancing against my will just because I'm not good at it. It's awkward. I'm uncomfortable. So I avoid things that are awkward and uncomfortable. And now everybody's forced to do that. But I'm not resentful. <laughs> All right, let's get this turned on. Let's see. Let's go to camera two. Uh, let's, put me let's put me in the corner here. There we go. And, okay, so that's the Windows 10 USB in there. Let's fire this up. 
So what I've got plugged in is just that Corsair spare solid state drive. And then what I, what I want, I think it's, is it F11 on this board? Um, if it's gonna turn on any day now that it wants to turn on. Actually, it should be saying no signal. Why does it not say no signal? Hold on, I, I, there might have been a change in the software. There was also a, speaking of drivers, there was a driver update for my video capture card, which I just stumbled on. I just thought, hmm, I wonder if they made new drivers. And they did, and then applying that driver changed my uh, capture port defaults. So now I don't know which one is which. Ah, found it. Okay, and that's why that happened. So anyway, so F11 brought up the boot menu, and I want to use the uh, SanDisk Extreme Partition 1. That's the flash drive, and we'll let that boot. It's a crucial SSD, not Corsair. I, I apologize if I said Corsair. I don't even realize I said that. Thank you for the correction. It's like that Gecko commercial. I mean, the Geico commercial where he says Gecko, and he's like, did I say Gecko? That's real. That happens a lot. That's why they make fun of that. Uh, let's see. I don't have a product key. And we'll do Windows 10. I think he's using Windows 10 Home on this computer, so I think we'll do Home. I normally do Pro. You know what? Let's just stick with Pro for right now. Uh, no, you know what? Let's keep it home. Let's let's replicate exactly what the customer has, and then we'll agree to the end user license agreement, and then we're going to erase all the partitions on this drive with a custom install. We'll select each partition and delete it. My screen is really really small. So I'm having a hard time reading it. And if I make the screen bigger, I can't see the chat. I really need two monitors, but then I don't have any room in the kitchen to put two monitors. What is the problem here? 36 megs. Hold on a minute, I don't know what that is. Let me, um, let me go full screen on this real quick. MSR. I don't know what that is. Well, I guess I'm going to delete it. There. So now we're, it's a 120 gig uh, crucial solid state drive. So these are perfect for testing, for doing just this. And we're going to hit next here. And this will automatically put those four partitions back in, format them, and install Windows. And I hit escape on the wrong keyboard. I'm trying to get out a full screen. I've got to use the right keyboard and mouse. This does not get confusing at all. All right. A couple other contributions have come in, so let me give a couple of shouts out to these kind folks. James Jeffries has contributed $10. Ben Fitzpatrick's contributed $1.99 and says, You're cool, Carrie. $2 for you, my friend. Thank you, Ben. Rochester NY87 contributed $10 and said, New York is a madhouse right now. It's crazy. That just sounds like New York City on a normal day. Carlo Destine has contributed $5. Thank you, Carlo. Make sure Carlo's a moderator here. Jens Carlson contributed 20 Swedish Krona. And CC for Tech at two pounds. Thanks, you guys. There may be some buffering issues with today's stream. I'm looking at OBS right now, and it did drop into the red briefly. I've had about, uh, looks like 1.4% of drop frames during today's broadcast so far. Stick with it. The audio should still come through okay. The video may get a little glitchy sometimes. There's very heavy internet usage happening with everybody working from home, which is another reason for me to start my broadcasts at a later time than normal. I'm on a cable connection where 
people share nodes. And so if the nodes are under a lot of use, it will affect everybody on that node. <clears throat> so that may be the problem. Some people having issues with uh, focus is probably because your resolution is set too low. Within YouTube, there's a little gear in the lower right corner that asks you what resolution you want to watch the video at. We're broadcasting out in 1080 HD. And of course, you can select 720, 480, 360, or 240. The lower the res goes, the more out of focus or blurry the video may look. And that's on you. I can't change that. YouTube has reduced the quality of streaming by 25% in Europe, as have Netflix and I believe uh, Hulu, if I'm not mistaken, because Europe's internet infrastructure is being taxed very heavily at this time. And so most streaming services are cutting the bandwidth by 25% in Europe. So that if you're in Europe watching me, uh, you may be impacted by that. Leaf Belly said YouTube is changing the default quality to 480. Well, regardless, you're a human being and you don't have to accept defaults. The computer is your computer and you can choose the resolution. You don't have to be mindless and just take what it gives you. You can actually configure it the way you would like it. It requires doing this with your finger on your mouse. It's not a big deal. Matthew wants to know if I can make a video on the different types of RAID and explain types just like M.2 and NVMe. I already did that. Uh, I think if you just type in Kerry Holzman space RAID, you'll find that video. In fact, I think there's even a quick tips video with that regard. It's not something I cover very often here because my channel is really for average home users, not technical people. And Average home users have no need for RAID. And furthermore, with the advance of SSD and the lowering of the price and availability, RAID is now sort of a thing of the past. Um, I, the only time I use RAID now is in my network attached storage, which is a Synology unit. And that's all automated. You don't have to know anything, basically. You just follow the online prompts. Other than that, I really don't think RAID is recommended, required, or necessary for non-technical people. And if you are a technical person, then you shouldn't need me to explain it to you. So anyway, there is some information on RAID, but I don't cover it too much because I feel it's really irrelevant and sort of obsolete uh, for most home users. And I don't wish to confuse them with unnecessary technical information that doesn't benefit them in any way, shape, or form. Okay, so now you see how fast Windows 10 installed. This again is a, this is a brand new machine that this customer built. I think he said he built it in August and was not able to get this thing to work. I think he said he hasn't even put a, an hour of use on it trying to get it to work. <clears throat> so if you've seen me install Windows 10, then of course you recognize all these little things I'm doing. I do, always do the same thing over and over again. And I'm just going to put a username of user in here for now because we have to put a name in there. And we're not going to put any password in, nor would I ever. That's up to the customer, and the customer needs to keep that to themselves. Even I should not have it. And then we're going to turn some of these features off, even though this doesn't really matter because this is all going to be temporary. I do like to be consistent. That creates habits, and that makes sure that everything happens the same way every time, regardless of reason. And then that assures me that everything goes out exactly the same way. So you'll find I often do things I don't have to do, like in this scenario, because I'm trying to create and enforce a habit. It's very important when you're not using automation. I don't like most automation because it stops working or it works incompletely. Automation always has to be audited and supervised to ensure that it's doing what you told it to do. There's nothing worse than dealing with a customer who has automated their backups and they have not audited or evaluated the backup in years. Then they call you because they need you to restore from their backup only to find out what they needed was never on the backup list and they didn't know. 
or that the backup was never actually made. The computer said it was making it. In one case, I had a customer with a machine with a tape drive, and the tape drive was whirring back and forth. It would, you know, make the buzzing sounds that a tape drive makes, which gave the customer the impression it was doing what it was supposed to be doing. Well, I don't know what it was doing, but it wasn't making their backups, because when they asked me to recover from the tape, there was nothing on it. So what was the tape doing whirring back and forth? No idea. So when you deal with automation, it's okay as long as somebody is monitoring, auditing, or supervising that automation on a regular basis. Could be once a month, once every two months, whatever your risk of loss is, right? So if, you don't, if you're not worried about losing two months worth of data, well, check it in two months. There's log files that can be read if you know how to interpret them and you're gonna actually read them a lot of people skip over them and miss critical information. They just don't translate. They don't take time to read the log files thoroughly. And so by doing things manually by hand, it's an old school method that works 100% of the time consistently. And the only time it doesn't work is when I don't do it. And at least with automation, it happens without excuse. You know, oh, I forgot to do it. That doesn't happen with automation. Automation never forgets. The problem is the literal nature of automation and how what you needed two years ago when you said it may have changed and you may not have thought about readjusting the automation to include those changes. And so you end up getting the original backups you were making, but none of the new data from some new software you installed that saves data somewhere else. And now you don't find that out until you need it and it's already gone. So with that, let me grab an ethernet cable here so we can get, uh, you know, I could probably just put this on Wi-Fi. I grab a Wi-Fi card. What I like to do is get Windows fully updated. I want to give this computer every chance to work. We're done with this, so we'll unplug that and we'll plug in this. This is a TP-Link Wi-Fi adapter. And I like it because I don't have to install any driver for it. Windows 10 will automatically put the driver in for me. I'll give it just a second. <clears throat> Should be down here. And then I can put this on my network. Which one do I want to go to here? See if that connects us. Now it wants me to create a Microsoft account because it senses that I'm online. You got to go to this lower left, look for this little box down here to skip that. A lot of people don't see that and they think that they have to create an account. You do not. You just have to read your screen. You'll see the colors are a little different on here. For some reason, it's defaulted to a different color scheme. Uh, I will change that back because it annoys me, but it doesn't. I don't know if it'll allow me to change it unless I activate. But uh, personalize themes. I just want the regular Windows theme. That's the way it's supposed to look right there. That's more familiar. And then I just lost my updating. So let me go back to Windows updates again. And you'll see it's grabbing a bunch of updates. And it is including some AMD drivers like the SM bus and you'll see some AMD system drivers. Let's take a look here and see what happens. Um, now that I'm thinking about this out loud, I maybe should have tried the time pilot without the Windows updates, but I'm pretty confident that we're not getting the chipset drivers. We're getting some of the drivers included in the chipset, but I don't think we're getting all of them. So that's why I do these live videos. I want to find out. I, I don't, I don't want to wonder. I don't want to guess. I don't want to assume. And that's what I'm doing right now, is, or what I was doing. And what I'm doing now is verifying what I believe is going to happen. So once we get all the Windows updates installed, I'm going to put the time pilot, time spy, is that what it's called? Time. I can't remember. We're going to put that demo on here and we're going to see if the demo will run without crashing. Now, as for the streaming computer, you guys uh, probably recently saw me and Mitch, we, we upgraded the streaming computer and we put the 3900X 
CPU in there along with a 2070 RTX graphics card. And I want to show you uh, if I look at, oh, let's see, we got to go here in browse to here. I want to show you the benchmark results that I ran. I took a screenshot of it somewhere. I have it somewhere. Sort by date. Uh, Time Spy. Okay. So with Time Spy, these were the specs. You know what? Let me just close out camera two there. So these were the specs on Time Spy of the machine. And look at the score, 10,440. That's the biggest number I've ever seen on TimeSpy. 10,440. And that's using the 3900X with the RTX 2070 Super. There's the CPU. I should be using this mouse. I'm pointing at stuff and you guys... Where's my mouse? Oh, <laughs> I can't show it to you. That's on the other machine. Okay, just confusing myself. Don't buy, don't just pay no attention to me. Um, and then of course the main the main time spy score right there, what that looks like. So that, that's that's pretty darn impressive. The machine is very loud when I turn it on. That graphics card sounds like a jet, but then after about six or seven seconds, it calms back down. And it's nice and quiet. That is a little worrisome for the streamer. So I'm back to using the upgraded streamer. I've taken the little mini computer streamer to a secondary location that I'm working on to have as, a, as an alternative place to film, but it's got its own issues over there. Um, one, not the least of which is that it's vacant and very hollow and echoey. But uh, I'll be doing some test vlogs from there to see if it's gonna work okay. All right, well, let's get this out of the way. Let's go back to camera two. See how we're doing on our updates. We're gonna hit retry here. Brendan Looney has contributed two pounds. Mike, Michael in Maryland has contributed five dollars. He says, here's something for your hard work and outstanding entertainment. There is substantially more in your PayPal. Well, thank you very much, Michael and MD. We'll make sure you're a moderator here. I appreciate all of your support. You guys are my sponsors. Uh, Planet Kryros has contributed $20. It says, Carrie, please stay healthy and drink a Coke on me. Uh, I, <laughs> I intend to stay healthy. I intend to. Mer Melanie Chambers has contributed five pounds, says stay safe, carry, and the rest of our little community. Agreed. Thank you, Melanie. Um, look, again, I want to reiterate, for those of us that have healthy immune systems, 97% uh, of us will, will be miserable but get over it, and 3% of us, according to the statistics, um, aren't going to make it. So... Um, you know, best to just not find out which one you are. Just don't get it. How about that? James Jeffries has contributed $10. Thank you, James. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's an interesting situation with, uh, with this shelter at home stuff going on. I've never seen anything like it in my life, as I imagine most of you have never experienced anything like it. And I think that, uh, this is a great opportunity for YouTube content creators to have their audience, you know, where people are forced to stay at home and find something to do. My videos do tend to go on for a while, so I hope that I am um, keeping you, keeping your mind off of all that stress and anxiety of what's going on outside your front door. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's important that we have a good attitude you got to be cautious, you got to be smart, but you don't have to be miserable and scared, all right? Relax. If you're smart, if you wash your hands, if you do what you're advised to do, just relax and make the best out of it. And I'm the kind of guy that 
if my house was on fire and I was about to lose everything in my life, I would look for a bag of marshmallows. I mean, you, you just got to find a way to make the best that you can of it because as long as you're not doing anything to, you know, to encourage or enable other people getting sick or yourself getting sick, one of the things that, that I believe makes our immune systems weaker is stress. So if we're really stressed and the news has you freaking out, you can make yourself sick or you might think you're sick because they're just constantly talking about it over and over and over. And you're like, oh, is my voice, my throat's a little sore. I, you know what I mean? That's not healthy. So not in my opinion. I think it's important we keep a sense of humor. And no matter what cards life deals us, we stay in the game and we play our hand. With every card you're dealt, you make the best hand out of it. I've been delivered some really crappy cards in five card stud poker and turn around and had, you know, a winning hand. That's all on how you play it. So <clears throat> just to make an analogy out of it. So I'm hoping that we can just get away from that talk and just focus on the tech side of things. And, and, um, and I'm seeing, I just saw my screen go blurry, just like what you guys are talking about. That's where the resolution drops. It's like my, my resolution on my, the monitoring dropped to 144. <laughs> I don't need it at 1080, but I'll put it at uh, 720. And then that fixes that right there. I see a lot of people are just happy to get away from the news, you know, because the news is just repeating itself over and over and over again. And they like to throw scary numbers at you and they, they make a lot of money doing that. But on the other hand, a lot of people wouldn't take this seriously if the news wasn't making a big deal about it. And we do need to take it seriously. But my fear is, it's not a fear. My concern is that there are people living in fear. There are people who are really stressed out and have a lot of anxiety right now. And stress and anxiety could potentially lower your immune system, making you more vulnerable. So that's going to ease your mind, right? <laughs> I have a philosophy, and that is you just make the best of any situation. There's always time for jokes. It's never too soon. Everybody should have a sense of humor. Um, this is a good time to laugh, but not at anybody's expense, but just a good time to laugh in general and to smile and, and to be positive. I think attitude is 90% of life. 10% of life is what happens to you, and 90% of life is how you choose to react to it. That's my philosophy, and I, I hope you share it. Obviously, it makes no difference in my life if you don't, but I just would really like people to make the best of it. But whatever you can do, you know, whatever that is for you. For me, it's, hey, I'm going to get my backlog caught up. You know, I'm going to get some work done. I'm going to get a dishwasher installed. I'm going to do all those things that were on my list. The world has been put on pause. What a great opportunity for me to get caught up. I've got a stack of books I've been meaning to read. I said, you know, when I get some time, I'm going to read these books. There's over a thousand books on my Kindle. <laughs> I seriously doubt this quarantine will last me long enough to get through one book. But um, I have no shortage of ways to spend my time. And, and I think there's plenty of things that you guys can do as well if you find yourself home bored that doesn't involve the television because all you're doing is being inundated with that information. And, and if you don't know it by now, I don't know what to tell you. And I'm just sitting here babbling on because I'm waiting for Windows updates to finish. <laughs> so I apologize. I really don't want to talk anymore about this because, like I said, that's, that information is everywhere. And I would really like to talk about anything but this. So if anybody has any technical questions for me, I'd love to answer them, or at least make an attempt to. Zero course, he's locked up in his room because he's at high risk for COVID-19 due to COPD. Yeah, uh, well, that's a lung, was it obstruction, pulmonary? That um, people that are, that are smokers, vapors, uh, people that are older, um, uh, people that have weakened immune systems have to be especially careful. But for the rest of us, we still don't want it because you're still going to be miserable. 
you know, the flu kills 20,000 people in the United States every year. So at least that's what I heard. And, uh, and that's obviously people who have weakened immune systems. Uh, it doesn't make it okay, but it also means that we don't, we don't panic like this, but this is spreading a lot faster and we don't have any, wh wh why am I talking about this? We already know all this information. So anyway, stay, you, you know what you need to do to protect yourself. And hopefully you know what to do so that you don't put, your, put other people at risk because you're like, well, I'll be fine. So I'll go do what I want. Please don't do that. If you have to go out, obviously you have to go out to get groceries or to pick up prescriptions and things like that. All right, we're getting our first restart. And I really, really want to change the subject. Really, please, technical questions, please. Chronic obstructive pulmonary disorder. I was kind of close. I mean, I'm not a doctor, but I kind of had three of those, didn't I? I guess I didn't say disorder, did I? Uh, I like to impress myself with things I shouldn't know. <laughs> I, had a, I was at a doctor's office, and they were, they were injecting a... Uh, Therin or ther I therolin, and they said it was an anti-inflammatory, and I said, "Oh, you mean it's a, it's a naproxen?" And she's like, "Yeah." She's looking at me like, "How do you know that?" I'm like, "That's an NSAID, right? It's a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory." I forget what the D is. She's like, "She's like, how do you know that?" I'm like, "Doctor Google." <laughs> like it's all in the top of my head. Like I didn't Google it. But I had Googled it in the past, and they just, for whatever reason, retained it. And people think I'm smart because I can remember stuff, but it doesn't mean I'm smart. <laughs> it also doesn't mean I'm good at remembering stuff. Uh, is it okay to ask questions if not noticed? Yes, yes, re-ask your question. That, so we've got 920 people watching, and a certain percentage of you are participating in the chat. And I go off on a tangent like some old man who can't keep on subject, and the chat flies by and I miss it. And there's a delay of about a minute and a half from what I say to when you hear me. So the only thing I would ask is that you don't post your question 30 times. All right? Within three or four or five times, I should see it. And you can put an at Kerry Holzman in front of it if you want to draw my attention to it. What graphics card do we have in this computer? We're, we're going to look at the specs here in just a minute. Um, I just want to continue to get a Windows update. You're just getting a little ahead of me. <laughs> Calling Dr. Holzwood. So being from, from Detroit, my... Uh, my dad's baseball buddies used to call him Dr. Detroit. And when they would go to restaurants, they would say, you know, table for two, what's the name? And his friends would say, Dr. Holzman. And the reason they did that was that, oh, as a doctor, he's important, and we're going to move him up on the road. You'll get seated sooner. <laughs> My dad's like, if anybody chokes on something or has a heart attack, is there a doctor in the house? They think I'm going to be able to, <laughs> he's like, you have to specify I'm not that kind of a doctor. <laughs> I don't think that works anymore, but back in the 80s, that was a thing. And luckily, he was never in a restaurant where anybody required any medical care. Ricky B's contributed 10 bucks. He goes, your videos and calm demeanor help relieve my stress. I hope so, Ricky. Thank you. And... Um, you're already a moderator, which is great, as you should be. Thank you for your contribution. Thanks for supporting the channel. I want to remind you, oh wait, Samuel Ramos contributed $10. He says, Carrie, it's nice to see you again live streaming. Thank you, Samuel. Appreciate it. I spent the last couple days at this alternate location trying to get it ready uh, as a filming location. 
and it's going to take a lot more work than I thought. I started it, and there's parts I need, and it's a half an hour away from where I live, so it's not like I'm going to jump in the car just to grab one little thing. And there's some stuff from Amazon I'm going to have to order, like um, I need an extra microphone, I need extra batteries, extra battery, well, rechargeable batteries, plus a recharger, plus I, I forgot the hot shoe for the camera, so I've got the tripod and the camera with no way to put the camera on the tripod because I forgot the darn shoe, and I'm not driving all the way home to pick up a little shoe. And I'm starting to realize, okay, do I have a long enough Ethernet cable? Do I have enough HDMI cables? Are they long enough? And I don't even know what the upload bandwidth is there. It may only be seven or eight megabits up. And as long as I'm doing basic stuff, it should be okay. And then I have an echo issue. And the echo issue, I'm probably going to have to buy some rugs. The rugs I want to get are $300 each, and I need at least two of them. And I don't even know if they're going to make a big difference. But I know that tile floor is going to be a lot more comfortable with carpet. So these are all things I'm doing in the background. When you're not seeing me live, it's because I'm working on other projects. Plus, I still have the computers to finish building that have to be shipped out. Michael in Michigan is like, did you forget about me? And um, that's embarrassing. When a customer has to reach out to you and say, what's going on? That means I have not been communicating well. <clears throat> this customer here, this repair, is something I wanted to do while it's fresh on my mind to get to a solution to find out if what I think is true with the importance of those AMD drivers. Also, I wanted to remind you that the AMD drivers were out there and available uh, and just released. So if you have an, a modern AMD computer, you should download those drivers. And I'm going to show you how to do that in just a little bit here. Rick Rubisette has contributed five euro. He says, Kerry, I have been absent for a while, so it's time to contribute once more. Stay healthy. Uh, thank you, Rick. Also, I had a nice contribution from uh, Rudiger Luthi, contributed via PayPal yesterday. Uh, very generous contribution to the channel. Thank you. I hope I am not mispronouncing your name. Um, we see Rudiger Luthi in the chat all the time. And uh, I just want you to know that those contributions mean a lot to me. And speaking of you guys being the sponsor, I am trying to work with Roboform to make them sort of a regular... The, the closest thing, basically, to a sponsorship is right now with RoboForm. <clears throat> so for right now, you can get 60% off RoboForm until the end of this month. So you only have uh, four days, right? 31 days in this month. There's four days left to get, take advantage of this deal. If you are a pre-existing RoboForm customer and you want to extend your license by taking advantage of this, Contact RoboForm support and explain that to them and they will make a special link for you. If you've never used RoboForm, it's never been this cheap. It's under $10 for one year of RoboForm and you can put it on any number of devices. You can put it on your smartphone, your desktop, your laptop. It all synchronizes, it's saved locally and it's saved online. So if your hard drive fails, all your stuff is online. If RoboForm were to get hacked, and as far as I know, in all the years, RoboForm's been around like two decades. They've never, ever had a breach. But even if they did, all of your passwords are encrypted, so the data would be useless to the uh, attackers. What I want to do is I want to bring RoboForm on the show like once a month, and I want to put a permanent link to their product at regular price in all videos of all my show notes. RoboForm also makes good sync, so I'd like to bring them on and have them maybe make a special offer on good sync. And then after some time passes, maybe make another offer again on RoboForm. I'm getting about 5,000 new subscribers every month, which means next month there'll be potentially 5,000 people who completely miss this deal. And the month after that, it'll be 10,000, and then 15,000, and then 20,000. So we have to keep revisiting it every so often because there's this whole new audience that just got introduced to me. And uh, if it works well for RoboForm and it works well for me, it's not the answer to my problems, but it's something. And if I get a few more of those somethings, uh, then things could be looking really, really well. So as long as I don't do anything stupid to screw it up <laughs> in these politically sensitive times we live in, all you got to do is misspeak one time or be misunderstood and it can all be taken from you. There's plenty of people that have posted on Twitter that have lost their jobs. So I want to be very cautious and keep things as professional.
but at the same time also have fun and also not be too rigid. I think it's important that we kind of keep things the way they've always been and that we find companies that get it and want to be a part of that. And if the companies don't get it, you know, I get tons of emails from companies that want me to sell their gray market software keys. I refuse to take those deals, guys. I want you to know. I want you to know that. Every single day, I get offers from companies that want to sell gray market windows, office, games, and I refuse to participate in that. Other YouTube channels might take that money and say, hey, I'm not responsible for what you choose to buy, but I'm not recommending anything to you that I wouldn't to my customers. So um, I'm turning away money because I don't like the ethics of it. I want you to know that. And so your contributions are what empowers me to do that. I'm not desperate. I don't have to go, well, I have to do something I don't want to do. It's my YouTube channel. There's no reason that it, I shouldn't be doing what I want to do. It's my channel. Right? Yeah. Let me rephrase this. It's our channel. Because without you guys, it's just me talking to myself in the kitchen, which is just Tuesday. <laughs> um, luckily, I have experience as a radio DJ. And so sitting in a little booth, in a DJ booth on the microphone, and you got to put on the radio voice. And in fact, a lot of people would tell me that I was doing my radio voice in my earlier videos. They're like, Carrie, you may not realize this, but you're, you're putting on a voice for radio. <laughs> and uh, it, it, was, it became a habit, you know, when I would broadcast. But what I was getting at was when you sit in this little booth all by yourself, you don't know who's listening, if anybody's listening to the radio. And it was funny because you put a record on, the phones are dead. You're not sure if anybody's listening. And then you offer a giveaway, and then suddenly the phones light up. And you're like, oh, there are people out there. I'm not just a crazy person talking to myself. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I would, uh, I would do the whole, um, hey, welcome into computer, you know, welcome to whatever it is. Welcome, welcome to my show. I'm Carrie Olson. And it would get very, it sounded just like radio. We'll be right back right after these messages, stay with us, stuff like that. And I didn't realize that I was putting that on. So um, <laughs> if you watch some of my older videos, you'll hear it. And it comes from all the radio that I did, six years of radio. Newman 1962 has contributed, uh, sorry, Nunman 1962 has contributed $20. Thank you, Nunman. Let's make sure Nunman is a moderator here. I'd love to add more friends in blue. I bet you, I bet you there's no other live YouTube streamers that have as many people in blue as I do, and I am very proud of that because everybody in blue is confirmed to be awesome. Anybody who's not yet blue are potentially awesome. Your awesomeness has yet to be determined, but don't give up. Be kind. Be supportive you'll be blue. And not just once, but every time you're in this chat room, you lead by example. I don't care about anything about your race. I don't care about your gender. I don't care about your age. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how dumb you are. I don't care what gender you are. All I care about is that you are kind and that you are supportive. And I will gladly and proudly make you a member of the blue team, which I hope is the biggest member of number of blues of any YouTube channel in existence, and I hope to make it 10 times bigger by this time next year. And for people who want to be jerks, the people in blue have the power to get them kicked out. And by that, I mean people that are intentionally being vulgar or are spamming the channel or are bots. And the, my friends in blue have taken a huge load off of my shoulders that when I'm trying to broadcast and I'm focusing on the work I'm doing, I'm focusing on being on the camera, I'm focusing on, on what's going out, that it's all going out accurately, that my stream is okay, the quality's okay. To add stress to some jerk looking for attention in the chat room um, it, it discourages the job, it affects me. So my friends in blue protect me. They, they protect the quality of the videos you know who's really good at doing that is when, when Mitch Morrison, when Mitch joins me, and Mitch hears me go off on a tangent, 
He's got this real gentle way of changing the subject. <laughs> and I love it because it's exactly what I need. I need somebody to just kind of nudge me. Be like, okay, Carrie, you're, 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 get back over here now. <laughs> and Mitch is really, really good at it. <laughs> you watch, watch videos with Mitch. Watch when I go off on a tangent and watch how Mitch brings me back. You may not even have noticed it. Mitch is very subtle and I need it sometimes. Geotronic says you can donate through PayPal, right? No other way. So there's three ways to contribute to the, to the channel, and that is uh, an Amazon gift card uh, through the Super Chat here in the chat room, as well as uh, PayPal, which the links for PayPal and the Amazon gift cards are in the video notes below this video. And, and you know, those are financial contributions. There's other ways you can contribute. You can contribute by sharing these videos uh, not downloading them illegally, but posting the links to my videos on your social media platforms that you visit or Reddit threads, whatever. Also by um, uh, being kind and supportive in the chat room is a way of showing support. Hitting the thumbs up button down there, there's um, at, at the bottom of the video, there's uh, what appears to be a thumb up and a thumb down. And if you hit that thumbs up button at any point during this video, if you click that and turn it blue, that's a great way to show your support. Also, uh, subscribe to the channel by clicking the red subscribe button and then hit that bell icon. That way it turns notifications on so you'll know anytime new videos are posted. You don't have to wonder when I'm gonna go on. I'm hoping to be on a regular schedule soon. And at that point, you won't have to wonder Right At this point, I'm only broadcasting as time permits. Once I get caught up with my backlog and once I get everything done I need to do and I have this alternate location set up, I should be able to start scheduling shows ahead of time so you know when I will be broadcasting. I'm getting very close to that. This whole containment situation is really gonna help me achieve that much sooner than I could have otherwise. Again, just looking at the bright side. That's all I'm doing. Um, so those are all different ways you can support me. I don't want you to think to turn blue, you have to send money. I'm not selling blue status. That's not what I'm doing here. Um, you cannot buy yourself out of being a jerk. Like, I'm a jerk, but I have a lot of money. I don't care. If you're a jerk, you're a jerk, and you're not welcome here, regardless. So the people that have contributed, um, Generally speaking, trolls don't contribute. Trolls do what they do because it's free and they're bored and it's a form of entertainment. And in their mind, the internet isn't real, so it doesn't matter. Well, then, it, then they're not real, so it doesn't matter if I ban them. You know what I mean? It works both ways. Let me go back one more time to Windows Update. Let's make sure we have all those Windows updates. See, where's Mitch? Mitch would have like nudged me like 10 minutes ago. <clears throat> the real BJOD says, I love your videos. There you go. You get have moderator status. See? Flattery will get you everywhere. Just being nice. But don't just be nice to me. It's important that you're nice to each other. If somebody says something you don't agree with and you cannot communicate with them without getting angry, stop communicating with them. Don't let it get into a fight. Don't let it get into an argument. They're as likely to change your mind as you are to change theirs. And you should already conclude that. Just go, I'm not wasting any more time with this person. If they're not doing anything that, that is, if, if it's not vulgar and it's not trolling, but they're just somebody who, who believes something that you don't believe, then just ignore them. Lead by example. Uh, I don't want my moderators to get abusive with their power because somebody says something you don't agree with that you ban them. If you do that, I'm going to remove you as moderator because I need my moderators to only remove vulgar comments uh, or people or spammers or bots. Those I want you guys to ban or hide from the channel. Anything else? I want you, to, if it's a concern, bring it to my attention. Let me decide because you may be costing me viewers and it's a waste of your time, by the way. 
you know, somebody's going to say something that's ridiculous, just don't respond to it. Just but what you're doing by responding to it is you're feeding it. And then they respond and you respond. You ever see two dogs barking and each dog wants to have the last bark? It never stops. So it looks like we've got all the Windows updates, which is good. I'm on the wrong screen once again. All right, so if you've been following along with me now, you know that I've just done a clean install of Windows 10 Home Edition, right? Was the one I put on there? Home. And I'm going to do a few other little things. I'm going to grab my utilities flash drive. Some people have asked me all the utilities that I use. I only use like a half dozen utilities. People have asked me, can you put those utilities on a flash drive and sell it to me? That's illegal. Cannot do that. These are free and open source utilities and they're constantly updated. You'll see that when I use utility software, I don't install the software. I run portable versions of the software. For a machine to run reliably, to keep your performance up, you want to keep software off the machine except for what you absolutely have to have. So you need antivirus, you know, you need some security software, you might need Microsoft Office or, you know, some sort of a Office type program. Uh, you need a browser, maybe Firefox, Opera, or you want a third party browser, that's all well and good. But you don't need software uninstallers and utilities to be installed. You always want to use the portable versions to keep your system as clean as possible. Also, when you install these utilities, if you don't use them for a couple of months and you go to use it again, you could be running an out-of-date version. So by using the portable version, if you just grab it whenever you need it from the source site, you'll always ensure you're using the latest version. So there's been updates to Crystal Disk Mark, Crystal Disk Info, CPU-Z, uh, HW Info, HW Monitor, Prime 95. These are primarily the only things I use apart from the 3D mark benchmarking software. That's all there is. That's it. Done. So it's not like it's a big complicated list. Uh, there's no magic utility that you're going to download that's going to solve your problems. The utilities I use provide me with information that I use to help isolate or identify a problem, an issue, or verify the machine is running as it should. So for example, on this flash drive that has my utilities under PC testing software, you'll see there, these are the applications. There's Prime 95, specifically uh, 26.6. There's Memtest 86, which is really just for making ISO images onto a flash drive. I don't install the software. I make a flash drive and boot from that flash drive. HW Monitor I use for Intel CPU temp monitoring and HW Info I use for AMD temperature monitoring. The Heaven Benchmark, of course, you guys should be familiar with that. Crystal Disk Mark Portable measures the performance of a drive to see how fast it reads and writes data. Crystal Disk Info tells me the health status of a drive, which I very rarely use now because it's really only beneficial for a mechanical drive. Then, of course, CPU Z I use for telling me all of the specifications of a computer, which is great because you don't have to remove any side panels. You can run this on your home computer. You'll see it's portable. I'm not installing anything. I just click on the executable 64-bit file here, and then I can close the window. And now what, what it's doing is it's running it right from that file with no installation. And this tells me that we have an AMD Ryzen 5 2600X. It tells me that we've got, um, you know, what, what speed our processor's currently at. This speed will ramp up and down as needed, up to, um, uh, usually the speed is up here, the total speed. It says it's a six core processor, but it doesn't tell me what speed, usually it tells me what speed. It tells, says we've got six cores with 12 threads. Now caches I generally ignore, that's just the caches on the CPU. Mainboard tells us we're using an ASRock X470 Gaming K4. We can look and see we've got the P3.70 BIOS installed, which was released on December 12th of 2019. When we go over to the memory tab, we can see we've got 16 gigs of DDR4 in dual channel mode. And we can see all of the CAS latency and cycle time and, and command rates. All that information is here. 
Now the Serial Presence device, or SPD, is a little chip on the memory module, and you'll see it says slot one is empty. Slot two has all the details of our G-Skill memory, specifically the part number, along with the uh, JEDEC information. And it tells us that it supports XMP 2.0. Slot three should theoretically be empty, and it is. And then slot four is the same uh, module, well, not the same module, but the module with the same specs. So therefore, by skipping a slot, we're in dual channel mode. Slots uh, one and three and two and four are two separate channels. And that improves performance. For graphics, we're using an NVIDIA GTX 1660. And so we're going to want to install that driver. And then the benchmark thing and about, I don't use those. Primarily what I'm looking at is the main board information, specifically for uh, making sure I have the latest BIOS and I know what motherboard I've got. And I love that I can get all of this information even remotely. I don't have to be in front of the computer. I don't have to take the side panel off. And I can see which, you know, are there memory sockets available? Sometimes CPUs, he gets it wrong though. But most of the time it's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to NVIDIA and we're going to download the 1660 driver. So we go here to drivers, GeForce drivers. And, and like I said, there's an automatic, which you can do. I, again, I don't like installing things on the computer, but just because I never do this, I'm going to do it. We'll hit run down here. It's going to download this little application, and it will automatically determine what graphics card you have and then offer you the appropriate driver so you don't have to answer all these questions down here. But in doing so, we are installing a piece of software which you could theoretically, you know, manually uninstall afterwards. But with the way NVIDIA releases drivers, you probably will use it again and again. And of course, they talk about collecting your data, blah, blah, blah. Of course, they have to collect your data. They have to collect which graphics cards you have. Well, then they're spying on me. Okay, then don't install the software. But anyway, that, that, that's a whole other percentage of the audience I have to deal with. But here, it's going to install the... Um, GeForce Experience software, which then should enable us to, uh, to tell us which graphics card we have and automatically provide the driver so that we don't have to. I'm just afraid it's going to require a login. So this, this does require a login, which I am not going to do, but that's how that works if you want to do it. We know we have a GTX 16 series, and it doesn't matter which one of these we choose, so they're all pointing to the same driver. Hit the Start Search button, and they'll be listed in order of release. So you'll see they released uh, on the 23rd a new driver. They released a driver four days earlier. They released a driver nine days earlier. Then it was two weeks earlier, and another three weeks earlier. And on the same day, they released the studio driver. Now, I use the studio driver. The studio driver is more stabilized for video work. It's not tuned for games. If we click on the studio driver, you'll see NVIDIA studio drivers provide artists, creators, and 3D developers the best performance and reliability when working with creative applications to achieve the highest level of reliability. Studio drivers undergo extensive testing against multi-app creator workflows and multiple revisions of the top creative applications from Adobe to Autodesk and beyond. So, I'm a creator. I want the studio driver. I don't want the game driver. This is a customer's machine and he wants it for gaming. So for this customer, we want the game driver. So we're going to go back and we're going to select we we'll hit start search again. And we want the latest one, which is on the top. That's the game ready driver. It has the WHQL certification. That's the Windows Hardware Quality Labs. That means that Microsoft, that means the driver was submitted to Microsoft for approval with compatibility 
and that it follows all of the proper protocols and procedures that Microsoft recommends for stability and reliability when writing applications for the Windows operating system. Not all companies will pay Microsoft for that certification. And, um, and Microsoft will now warn you of that because Microsoft got sick and tired of being blamed for blue screens. This really happened during um, Windows ME. A lot of people thought Windows ME was the worst operating system. And in every case that I ever saw problems with Windows ME, it was because of drivers. And yet Microsoft took the fall for third party manufacturers writing crappy drivers that didn't follow Microsoft's recommended policies and procedures, which resulted in the operating system becoming unstable. And because it was so frequent, the general public associated that to Windows ME being a bad operating system. So in response to that, Microsoft now offers certification. And if companies want to pay for that certification, uh, they acknowledge that by saying, you know, you know, saying it's WHQL certified. If they choose not to, then a warning message pops up. If you'll slow down and read what it says, when you guys are installing, a lot of people just click, click, click. You actually read what it says. It says Microsoft has not verified that this driver meets our requirements and may cause operating system instability or other issues. And by clicking OK or agree or whatever it is, or yes, I think is what it is, you're agreeing to accept that risk to continue installing the software. And the companies that do that will often even say in their instructions, you're going to get this message that Microsoft warned you that our driver may not be compatible. We're going to assure you that it is and to click yes. Well, of course they're going to say that. Companies don't know if they're hardware, if they're certified, if they're meeting the requirements unless they submit. Do you understand? So of course they're going to say, yeah, we, we met the requirements. We're just not going to give Microsoft that money because we know we're meeting the requirements. Well, you don't know because you didn't have Microsoft check it. But those products sometimes cost a little tiny bit more money because that certification process is expensive. I'm just doing the regular, nothing special here, just a regular express install of the driver. Holy smokes, I just missed a big contribution. Where did that come from? Somebody contributed $200? Trying to find it. Marvin Jameson contributed 200 US dollars. Wow, that's extraordinarily generous. Thank you very much, Marvin. That means a lot to me. It's, it's, it, it, it helps greatly, as well as all the other contributors, by the way, because it all adds up. Uh, that includes, I'm going to repeat some here, uh, Ricky B and Planet Cryos, as well as Nunman 1962 and William Cregan. Uh, John Dorrington contributed two pounds and says, Hi, Carrie from Sidcup, UK. Space Lord contributed two pounds and says, have a Coke on me. It's always a pleasure being here. PC Area has contributed 10 Ron. I forget what that is. Romanian? I can't remember. Uh, says, love your videos in streams from 2014. Right on. Uh, Bubba2424 contributed $10 and Mira Ora contributed again $2 and, and re is telling me Marvin Jameson donated $200. Well, Marvin is certainly a moderator at that level. Uh, I guarantee you no trolls are sending me that kind of support. So thank you so much. That's unheard of. I appreciate that very much. Usually in Super Chat, the contributions stay uh, at $20 or below. And the reason for that is that um, YouTube takes 30% of whatever you contribute through Super Chat. When you contribute through PayPal, PayPal takes 3%. And if you do an Amazon gift card, then I get the full amount. So I appreciate your contribution, and I just want you to know in the future, if you want to donate amounts over $20, you certainly can continue to do that. But please be aware that, that YouTube takes 30% of all those contributions in Super Chat. They also make me wait a month before I get them, and they don't give me any receipts, so I don't have any way to thank you personally, like in an email. With PayPal, I always email a thank you to people. 
uh, and the same with the Amazon gift cards. And if somebody says, uh, I don't like you anymore, I want my money back, I just refund their money. I, I can't do that in Super Chat. Um, so uh, I, I, I want you to know you're, you're welcome to do that as many times as you want, but if you want more of the money to go to me and less to YouTube, uh, do those contributions through PayPal or an Amazon gift card, and, and I get to keep more of it. But thank you so much. It is really, truly appreciated. So let me go back to where I was here with, uh, with the driver installation. Where is it? There we are. No. Wrong button, Carrie. All right, so we'll click close here. So now we've got the NVIDIA driver installed. I want to put Uncle Carrie's Windows 10 optimizer, those of you that are new here. When I build systems for customers, there's a bunch of little tweaks and tunes that I do, tune up things that I do to Windows 10. And I always did it by hand, and it just got tiresome, and sometimes I would forget, did I do it or did I not do it? There's so many steps involved. So I asked uh, Nick, who's a programmer over at D7X Tech, if he would write a little application for me to up, to automate this process. And I talked to you guys about this thing, and I showed it, and many of you said, I want to buy that. Like, I didn't think to myself, I'm going to write an app that I can sell. It just kind of happened. Like, I just need this app to help go through the number of computers I go through with consistency, reliability, and I want to do it faster. And so this little app, when I run it, you'll see uh, we can go here, we can go to options, we can check for updates to make sure we have the latest version, which we do, 1.3. And everything that has a check in it means this system, like this is an active app. In other words, it, it's not just blind. It's looking and saying, anything that's got a check in it needs to be done, or it's recommended. And you can uncheck items. I'm just going to hit apply. You'll see a bunch of access denied errors here. That's just turning indexing off. That's normal and nothing to be worried about. And then it's going to need a restart for these changes to take effect. And if we try and run the Windows Optimizer again, it'll tell us that there's nothing to be optimized. It, it's intelligent and it knows that we've already, uh, that it checks those settings and verifies that those settings are already set optimally. So if you get a big Windows update, uh, for example, you might want to run the optimizer again. It doesn't hurt you to run it periodically just to make sure that it keeps telling you everything's already optimized. Uh, it sells for 10 bucks. I think it's 10 bucks. And the link for it is in the video notes. There's no key required to activate it. I'm, it's on an honor system. Basically what I'm saying is if you pay the 10 bucks and you get the app, you can run it as many times as you want on, it, on any number of computers. Run it on your friend's machines, run it on your machine, uh, run it on everybody's machine. I'm just asking you don't give them the software. Let them know they can buy it for 10 bucks so that it can help support the channel. What I don't like doing is like panhandling. That's not what I'm trying to do here. If somebody's giving something to me, I want to give you something back. So by sending the $10 in to support the channel, in exchange, I'm going to give you the Windows 10 Optimizer, but you've got to purchase the Windows 10 Optimizer. And all of the purchasing and distribution is all handled by D7X, 10, uh, D7X Tech. Now, look what happens when I go to run the Optimizer now. It's going to check our settings, and it'll say your system is already fully optimized. So you don't have to wonder. So if I get a bunch of Windows updates that come in, and I wonder if Microsoft has reset some things, just run the optimizer again. And again, all I ask you to do is just don't give it away. I mean, if you do, I can't stop you. But um, you're really not helping me. If you, if you want to see the channel continue to grow, then the best thing you can do is tell your friend, you need to buy your own copy. You need to support this guy. It's only 10 bucks, And it'll run indefinitely. Like, as far as I'm concerned, um, as Microsoft updates Windows 10, there will be free updates to the Windows 10 Optimizer, uh, certainly for the next two years minimum, 
and then we'll see what happens beyond that. But in all likelihood, we're, we're myself and the folks at D7X Tech are trying to keep the updates free forever. That's our intent, but we'll see how things go. We, don't, we can't predict the future, but if things stay the same as what they are, that's our goal. Um, I'm not buying a yacht anytime soon. I don't want you to think I'm getting rich off of this. It's, it's not like that at all, but it's a great way that, you know, granted I'm sharing experience and education with you, which has value. I also like the idea that you can get this little application that won't hurt your computer. And uh, it's all stuff you can do by hand, but this just automates it and happens a lot quicker. So the next thing I need is the um, Time Spy benchmark, which I don't have on here, do I? Do I have Time Spy? No, I don't. So bear with me for a minute. I'm going to put the Time Spy software on this flash drive. So I need to plug it into my streamer. Streamer. You're nothing but a streamer. Okay. Uh, there was also an update to the Samsung Magician software. It's now at 6.1, and the NVMe driver is now at 3.3. If you're running a Samsung solid state drive, I recommend you have the Samsung Magician installer. And if it's an NVMe drive, that you're using the NVMe Samsung driver, and that you're using the latest version, 6.1.0 on Magician, and 3.3 on the NVMe driver. What am I doing? Oh. It's finding the TimeSpy software. TimeSpy. Where'd I put it? Okay, I got it. So it's a pretty big program, it's about six gigs. And when I install it, there's a couple of updates and we'll make sure we put all the updates on. And then we're gonna execute that and see if it's able to complete without crashing. What I am expecting to happen is I expect the software to appear to work just fine, but stop before it's supposed to with an error message. That's what I think is going to happen. And just to remind you, we've just now installed a clean copy of Windows 10 Home. I've optimized it with Uncle Kerry's Windows 10 Optimizer, and I've installed the latest NVIDIA uh, GTX 1660 graphics driver, and I'm not doing anything else other than installing TimeSpy. This system, I believe, will crash. And the reason it's going to crash is we didn't put on the AMD chipset drivers and that Microsoft does not provide them to you automatically, whereas Intel does. And I believe that's what's gonna happen, and I could be completely wrong. <laughs> I want you to be aware, I very well could have this whole thing assumed incorrectly. And rather than go about giving out false information or information that's based on theory, it takes a few minutes to actually test my theory and then verify factually what's happening here. So yes, I consistently risk embarrassing myself on live camera because that's life. That's how we learn. If, I'm, if I know everything and I never make mistakes, uh, it's not a real attractive quality people like. People like normal, regular people, you know, humble, fun. People like to teach others. If somebody already knows everything, it's like, oh, okay, what can I offer that person? So I never want to come across as like I know everything. Far from it. Far from it. There are certain things I've experienced the hard way. <laughs> and those things I know. I don't care what you say. Those things I've experienced. But then there's everything else. And for everything else, there's theories. So this is taking a little while to copy, although thankfully I've got that really fast flash drive here. So that six gigs is just now finished copying over. And I 
so confused. Okay. John Wilson's contributed $20. He says, good evening to all, and have a six-pack of Coke on me, Uncle Gary. Oh, that'll get me a case, my friend. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Let me eject the flash drive. And we'll plug that in over here. All right. Now, I have to go full screen. Ed Miraora with a contribution of $5 says, AMD chipset drivers also add a new power plan that they say will give better performance than the default maximum performance profile. Uh, yeah, this is an important thing to consider when you put the AMD drivers on. If you had your power plan set um, the way I recommend, which is basically turn off, disable, um, any power plant settings except for let the minimum CPU power be at 5% and the maximum at 100% and then have it um, turn your monitor off after a certain amount of time, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, whatever you know that you like. And then um, everything else I disable, standby, hibernation, all that gets disabled. Hard drive powering off, that should be disabled. Leave it on. That's my recommendation. So after you install the AMD chipset drivers, it's going to change all that. And you'll have to go back in and change it the way you like it, unless you prefer AMD's default. Thank you for bringing that up, because I remember they, they did do that. That's bad communication right there. They do do that. What I'm saying, they is AMD. Does that means changes the power plan. So what I should have said wasn't they do that. <laughs> That's too vague. <laughs> AMD does change the power plan when you install the chipset driver. Okay, so looking on the flash drive back under PC testing software, uh, let's just copy the thing 2016 right here. So this is the one I want. Most people grab this from Steam, by the way, although you can probably find a website somewhere where you can download it. Uh, which is what I had to do. Uh, most people who are running this benchmark are going to Steam and grabbing it through Steam. And for those of you who don't know what Steam is, you wouldn't need this benchmark. <laughs> so don't worry about it. <clears throat> All right, so this is going to copy over here. Almost done. OK. And now we'll run the installer. Now this is a pretty intense graphical benchmark, and I think it uses ray tracing on this for those that um, for those graphics cards that support it, which the 1660 does not. Could be wrong on that, but I think it does. It also supports the latest DirectX 12, I think is what it's up to now, and it's backwards compatible. So you can download this for free on Steam. And you can run the same benchmark on your system and compare it to the system you see here. You can do everything exactly the way I show it. And you can get a baseline of how your system rates with regards to performance. Not that it matters to anybody but you. But if you're curious and you want to do it, it's completely safe to put on your system. And I would recommend when you're done with it that you uninstall it because it is fairly large. Wonder Woman has contributed $9.99. Says, is Acronis still coming on March 31st for World Backup Day on your live stream? Uh, no, at this time, we're postponing Acronis because of what's going on with uh, the coronavirus. It's interfering with our ability to uh, put that together at this time. When things return back to normal, we'll bring them back on. So thank you for asking. Um, but it has been temporarily postponed, and when a new date is scheduled, I will make you aware of it, and we'll have uh, Bagauden back on, and 
and go forward as we originally planned. And thank you for the contribution, Wonder Woman. And it's a great question. And I apologize that I uh, apparently forgot to talk about that. I do have, and I'm excited to say, two brand new guests coming on the show to do a, a Skype interview. Like, if you've watched Tech Vets with Mike Smith and myself, uh, we are side by side on the Skype. We're going to do that with a gentleman who created his own computer business and sold it. And we're going to talk about what that process was like, how he created the business, what were some of the challenges, what advice does he have to others. Uh, and when I say he sold it, I mean, he, he made a lot of money. He doesn't have to work anymore. I mean, that's, that's the dream, right? And then there's, uh, not for me though, I like to work, I always want to work. But for most people, that's the dream. And we're going to talk to somebody who's actually done it. There's a lot of people who tell you how to do it, who they themselves have never done it. I don't want to talk to those people. The other person I want to bring on is a friend of mine I've known for many years. And he's somebody that I admire. Uh, well, I admire both these guys. But this guy... He used to write for PC World Magazine many years ago. And his style of writing, uh, he wrote the way he talks. He wasn't writing like for a Pulitzer Prize. It was as if it was a friend talking to you directly. And it was so refreshing in a technical publication to see plain English written where they didn't even care if it came across as I'm an idiot. Sometimes you read, sometimes I read some writing, I go, who wrote this, a 12-year-old? His writing was like, who wrote this? A friend of mine who, who doesn't care what other people think. <laughs> his, his writing style was um, very welcome to me. And in fact, when I wrote my book, the publisher didn't like the way I was writing it. The style of writing was conversational. They wanted it more bookish. I'm like, yeah, but people don't talk like that. I don't like when people write differently than they talk. I just think you're trying to put on airs. You're, 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 uh, it just rubs me the wrong way. So <clears throat> when I read a book and it's all using words that people don't use in normal conversation, nobody I know, uh, and it goes to great lengths of describing the surroundings using verbiage and adjectives that are uncommon, People go, wow, that's so well thought out. I'm like, nobody talks like this. I don't like this. Anyway, his name is Steve Bass. And Steve has written a couple of books. They're available on Amazon. They're all old books now. But um, it was a real honor to meet Steve Bass at the Consumer Electronics Show many years ago and to let him know what a big fan of his I was. And I wanted to offer him a copy of my book because he was the example I gave to my publisher that this writing style was acceptable. And without him, it would have been a tougher uphill, uphill battle for me to convince the publisher that it was OK. Furthermore, whenever I received my PC World magazine in the mail, his article, he had like a one-page article, was always the first page that I turned to because it was such an enjoyable read. I'll tell you what's cool. What's cool is, he appears to like me back, and we've been friends ever since. So anytime I would go to California to do filming for Newegg, I would meet up with Steve, and we would go to lunch together. And he is, he was the president of the Pasadena PC Computer User Group for many, many years. He's about as nerdy as they come, but at the same time, he doesn't follow the stereotypes that accommodate most nerds, which is one of the things I really like about him, especially when we're talking years and years ago. It's, it's far more common today um, for, for people to be nerds without being the stereotype. But, but back then, it was pretty rare. Anyway, 
Uh, Steve will join me and we're going to talk about tech. Now, even though he's not, you know, he's retired from, from all the writing, um, he still is on top of, you know, the, the, the technology that he uses every day. And I'm interested in what he thinks, you know, from his perspective, because he's a tell it like it is kind of guy about the state of malware and ransomware and the operating system and how it's developed compared to how it was. And hopefully, you know, you get the cranky old man. Because that's, he always called himself the technology carmagen. Carmagen? Carmagen? And um, does anybody in the chat remember Steve Bass? I wonder how many of us have been around that long. I've got 3D Mark installed, and so well, I am waiting for answers in the chat. We're going to run the benchmark and we're going to see if this benchmark will complete without crashing. Okay? I believe it's going to crash. Even though, you know, imagine you just built a computer. You decided to go with AMD because all the people on the internet said, hey, you, well, you should go with AMD. It's a better value. You installed Windows 10. You built everything right. And now your games are crashing. You've taken it to a shop. They can't, they can't fix the problem. They replicate the problem. And now it's been months and you've been unable to use your computer and out of desperation you have reached out to me and said, Carrie, please help me. Nobody else can solve this. And it may be just as simple as you have to grab those AMD chipset drivers by hand. We're going to find out very shortly. Space Lord says he remembers Steve Bass. Stealth Mode's contributed $5. He says, great community of friends. Agreed, and thank you. We have exactly 1,000 people watching live now. Welcome in, everybody. Paul Lombard says, help me. What help do you need, Paul? We've got lots of friendly people here in the chat. Paul Newman says, we're all nerds here. Nah, I wouldn't say that. Um, what else do we have? Cult of personality says, I've always been a nerd. That, that's pretty much something, so a nerd isn't usually something you become, it is usually something you were born into. You're just born a nerd. For people that say, oh, I'm a nerd, but that's just something they decided two years ago, I mean, you may have the passion, uh, that which nerds are, you know, highly passionate about certain things, technology, sci-fi, things like that. But most of us true nerds don't have a choice and are mostly ashamed of it, to be honest. Um, it's become cool to be a nerd, but it never was. <laughs> it wasn't in the 80s, I can tell you that. <laughs> and it wasn't by choice. Okay, so right up here, and right up here it says the, 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 the Time Spy application has crashed. You see an error has occurred. Do you see that? You're all with me? So here we imagine you're in the situation. You've built this new computer. And... Um, You've triple checked all of your work. And you bought AMD because you were convinced AMD was a better value. Which, it, you know, depending on how it's used, that may absolutely be true. This is not a dig at AMD, and I don't want you to misunderstand the purpose of this video. If you had built an Intel system, like a Core i5, a Core i7, Core i9, this benchmark will run without crashing, without you having to do anything special. I'm going to do one thing right now. In fact, let me, let me emphasize this. I'm going to do one thing right now, and that is I'm going to download and install the AMD chipset drivers because we do not get them automatically like you do with Intel. And that means you have to put a little bit more effort into your build 
And furthermore, you will not get any alerts or updates when new drivers are released, which means you need to periodically check so that you always have the most reliable, most secure uh, drivers available on your system, which also could be more performance in many cases as well. So I'm going to show you how to do that because it's not obvious. And again, this is for people who build their own computers. If you've got a computer built by Dell or HP or one of the big pre-built system manufacturers or a laptop, then you will go to them. They usually, like Dell has their own update utility. That's what you're going to use. You're not going to do this. But if you've built your own AMD system, you should be doing this. And if you haven't done it or you can't remember if you've done it, you can do it again and it will tell you. There's no harm in doing it twice. Let me show you. Here's how this works. I'm gonna, once again, I'm going to place myself up in the corner here. In fact, I think in this example, I'm going to go right down here. And I need to bring up the browser. We're going to close the uh, TimeSpy benchmark and bring up whatever browser you want, whatever you use. I'm using uh, Edge or whatever it is. And I'm going to type in AMD chipset drivers. And the first link that appears, and this is Bing, I usually use Google, but right there it's going to www.amd.com forward slash en for English forward slash support. So that's the first link. That's what I want. Now, it's going to ask you what AMD makes a lot of stuff. They make graphics cards for gamers. They make graphics cards for professionals. They make uh, CPUs with, with graphic cards built in. They make chipsets. They make processors. And they make embedded technologies, embedded processors like on laptops. So we're interested in the chipset driver. Now, there's a lot of different chipsets do you want. Um, Threadripper, which is the STRX4 or TR4, or is it Socket AM4, or is it an earlier AMD 9, 8, 7, or 6 series? Now, if you're building a modern computer that's AMD, it'll be a Socket AM4. Then it says, okay, which chipset series? Is it X570, 470, 470, 450, 350, or A320? Regardless of which one of these you choose currently, as of the 27th of March 2020, they all point to the same exact file. All right, so I don't really care what this is. I'll say it's an X570, who cares? Just to prove to you it doesn't matter. And I'm gonna hit submit, and it's gonna point me to the exact same file, which is right here, the Windows 10 64-bit edition. What the older chipsets may offer you is a Windows 7 driver, which you see doesn't exist here, but you shouldn't be running Windows 7 anyway. But they all have the same Windows 10 64-bit edition driver. You'll see it's a 50 megabyte download that was released on the 19th of March, 2020, which was just eight days ago. And I'm gonna download that. Now, I'm not interested in anything else on this page. Uh, if you wanna look through that, you go right ahead. That is off topic for this video. That's all optional stuff. So I'm gonna, you, you can extract this if you want to. It's a zip file, and by double clicking on this zip file, it exposes the files inside. Now, because this is just a single executable file with a manual, if I just double click on the file and just hit run, I don't have to extract it because that itself is a compressed file that when we run it, it's going to extract the contents of that file. Right now, that's what it's doing. And while that's going on, I'm going to close these background windows because we no longer need them open and it'll help clarify what we're seeing on the screen. Now, the AMD software installs a little bit differently than most software. In fact, any other piece of software I've ever seen. What they do is they give you these little green check boxes and show you six different drivers that are part of the chipset package that need to be updated to a newer version than what you have. Uh, if you already have a newer version, then that box should automatically uncheck itself. And then down here at the bottom is the license agreement with a green install button. And it says by clicking install and installing the software, you're agreeing to all the terms and conditions stating in the, in the end user license, blah, blah, blah. So we hit install. Now we're going to wait and allow this to 
do what it needs to do to get the drivers installed and it will require a restart for those drivers to take effect and then we can run the time spy benchmark one more time and see if we can get to the end now this isn't just the benchmark where this problem exists this person wasn't really interested in the time spy benchmark this person was interested in playing a game and every time they started the game it would crash the reason the whole time spy benchmark came up was he had somebody look at the system and diagnose it for him and they recommended to me if I wanted to repeat this er error and I don't have a Steam account I need to be able to replicate the customer's problem and he said well here's what you do uh, just download the time spy demo it won't run that he says I changed all the stuff it just there's no way to fix it that I could find and 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 I was very helpful for him to email me and provide that information to me because then I was able to replicate the problem as I just did and you were witness to and now that we've re we're rebooting right now the first thing I'm gonna do is run the time spy app that's the only change I'm making I am a little concerned at how much time it's taking to restart. That's an unrelated problem. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to reach over and hit the, hold the power button in and shut the machine off. And then I'm going to wait for the fans to stop spinning. And then I'm going to turn it back on again. And I think what's happening is I think he's got some RAM that's way too fast for this system. He's got some super high-end RAM in there, which is a waste of money. And I think the RAM has a slight incompatibility. That's my theory on that. And I think it's causing the system to, rec to it's not restarting properly because of it. So now it's booting back up and I'm gonna run Time Spy again. Once again, no other changes as you've witnessed have been made to the system. And using Windows Update, it said there were no more updates available. Windows did not provide it to us, the AMD chipset drivers. And yet, ignorance is bliss, right? How many of you have built a system made by uh, and selected an AMD processor and have not installed your AMD chipset drivers? How many of you are, are out there that have done that? So you might be saying, well, I don't have any system problems. I can pretty much guarantee you, you're only getting about 75% of your computer's capable performance. And if you will download this driver and install it that I just showed you, you will most likely see a significant increase in performance on your system. And then you can write to me and say, thank you. You can write to me, <laughs> I don't mean to sound like a jerk, but you can, you can verify that for other viewers by putting a comment below this video after it's live, it'll be available as a regular video, and comment that what the difference was, if you noticed any difference, after you installed the AMD chipset drivers. It does seem to be AMD updates the chipset drivers about once every three months, so you don't need to check constantly. And there are web services, perhaps that might work, that monitor websites for changes and can email you when a website changes. So for example, when a new version of a driver comes out, then the website will change to reflect that. There used to be a website called uh, changedetection.com that would monitor websites. And that would be a way of staying on top of drivers like that. And there's other services I'm sure that are available. And if you know of any that are easier than that, uh, please let me know in the comment section below because manually checking for these AMD chipset drivers sucks. It absolutely sucks and AMD needs to fix this expecting ordinary people to go through these extraordinary steps and to answer all those questions that most average people wouldn't know the answer to uh, I find is is not very consumer friendly am I covering up our benchmark numbers whoops let me put that back <laughs> wrong one Gary I wanted to move this are there benchmark numbers down there nope all right
Well, we're letting the benchmark run. It's a beautiful benchmark. Uh, well, that's running. If you guys have any questions for me, uh, this is going to be a few minutes. Zero courses carry Ryzen Master should automatically update the chipset drivers. The problem with Ryzen Master, uh, when I ran it, it caused my system to crash. When I would put it into like creator mode, it would start crashing uh, blue screening. The other issue with Ryzen Master uh, is it too has to be an application the end user has to know to go and get. So in my opinion, rather than confuse the, the end user with putting on a piece of software that's as complex as Ryzen Master is, that has the potential side effects that come along with using it, I would rather just tell the user to go and grab the AMD chipset drivers. Now, I do have the Ryzen Master software installed on the streamer, and it has never, never, not once, told me that there was an AMD chipset driver update. It's never happened. It's told me when there was a Ryzen Master update, but it's never told me when there was a chipset driver update. Okay, here we go. So the, the, the free demo kind of goes through this process of like a, it, it, it runs through like a, through a trailer and then the benchmark actually starts. Now, I don't remember where we crashed before. Ooh, this doesn't look good. Oh, no, it's normal. No, it's not normal. So we still have an error. Now this is interesting because with the AMD chipset driver installed prior, it seemed to me that it fixed the problem. And the reason why I wanted to do this live was to find out if, if that were the case. And it seems like there's another piece of this puzzle that I'm missing because I did fix it. I was able to fix it. And the problem is I made three or four changes and I don't know which of the four um, resolved the problem. So I'm gonna try something else here and that is, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to shut this computer down. Start, shut down. We're just going to shut this down, and I'm going to go full screen on camera one, which is right, fit the screen. So I'm trying to remember. I was so confident that was going to fix it that I'm, I'm sort of like, <laughs> everything was going exactly like I said it was going to go right to that point. But that doesn't mean those chipset drivers didn't need to be installed. I mean, they're, they're still going to make a big performance difference. And you should have them, and you're not getting them automatically. All right, now, with regards to fixing this problem, I think the RAM is too fast. Now, I was able to get that RAM, uh, I was able to get the benchmark to complete. And I think one of the things I changed was a setting in the CMOS, in the BIOS. But now I'm not sure anymore, because a couple days have passed, and a lot's been going on. But I've got some spare RAM back here. Let's grab this right here. Now, I don't know. I, I've got RAM. That's. I got lots of RAM back here, and I'm just going to grab the first thing I grab. I'm not looking for any specific kind of RAM. So this was in the streamer before I upgraded it, I think. So this is um, DDR4 2400 CL16. G-Skill, AMD compatible, which is stupid because all RAM is AMD compatible. But anyway, uh, what I think is happening here is the RAM he's got in here is the super high-end. I'll show you. He's got this G-Skill rip jaws, and I've never even seen RAM this fast before. This is um, 3,600. Like, I've seen it for sale, but I've never actually had anybody buy anything that fast. I think 3,400 is about as fast as I typically see. And I could be remembering this wrong, so, you know, don't beat me up over it, please. But we're going to put this other RAM in here just to see if it still crashes. So 
one way or another, I'm going to make a, I'll have my sister make a quick tips video out of this, but we're going to have to change the, um, the agenda since it didn't end result in what I expected. So that's the new RAM installed. Let's fire it back up. We'll go back to camera two. I'm just, I'd have to go back at the, and, and look at the video again to see. Um, right now the system's powering off and on as it's adjusting for the new, because the RAM's been swapped out. And um, be patient when you, if you do that, if you change RAM out on a system, uh, you might be concerned it's not powering on right away. Yeah, give it a full minute. It, it may cycle off and on a couple of times, uh, which may very well be normal. So just be patient and uh, give it the chance to self-adjust. And it should eventually figure it out, which it just did, and readjust the memory timings in the RAM. So we don't have to go in the BIOS and change anything. This all happens automatically if you're patient. Then Windows is going to load um, photo mix media. Why are you not a moderator? Does Linda need help with editing? Yeah, of course. Linda's buried in edits buried. But unfortunately, unless you talk to me, you won't necessarily know what I want edited or how I want it edited. Um, a lot of times people that offer to do editing for me, all they're doing is they're just cutting out content and they're just stitching it all together. There needs to be transitions. Sometimes there ne you need to grab a screenshot or some, if I'm referring to something, you might have to capture, you know, on your own computer. If I'm talking about a flash drive, you can you know, cut away to a picture of Amazon where that flash drive is for sale. And the editing is more than just cuts. Uh, but anyway, if you're interested in it uh, and, and you do good work, I'd, I've got work for you. It's not fun. I don't know how anybody enjoys that. Um, let's go back to uh, Time Pilot one more time now. I've changed the RAM. Yeah, that's very odd because I'd swear all I did was change the chipset driver that caused the problem to go away. But now that I think about it, I think I did that off camera. I'm trying to think what else I changed. That's why you should only change one thing at a time. or you end up in the position I'm in right now, which is not efficient. One cave per says, oh no, it's conundrum. He says it could be both. It could be the fact of the RAM and the AMD chipset driver. Um, maybe, maybe. Here's what I know. Here's what I know for sure. Your AMD system will run without the AMD chipset driver. And I know you're not getting the full chipset driver package from Windows Update. So if you have an AMD system, you should go to the AMD support site and download and install that chipset driver. That much I can tell you is a fact. And for many of you who've never done that before, you will likely see an increase in performance. It's very likely. At the worst, you should notice no difference whatsoever. But it shouldn't cause you any problem. And it's intended to be installed. But it's not happening automatically. So it won't happen unless you do it. We've got 1,061 people watching around the world. Do me a favor and just type in the chat room. Tell me where in the world you are. And uh, I, I love the idea as a kid, as a teenager in the 1980s, the thought that I can be socially awkward in real life. 
but completely comfortable on camera and talk to a worldwide audience <laughs> plays with my head a little bit. So I always love to see where people are watching me from. So let's see here. And they're coming in. Here we go. We've got Travis in Minnesota. Sharon joins us from the UK, of course, Sharon Idol. Mark Baggett in Massachusetts. Dave, John Davidson is in Northeast Thailand. John uh, was a, a big contributor to Thready. And of course, John, if you, I don't know if you've been tuning in lately, but Thready is now the main video editor that my sister uses, and she loves it. Like, I hate Thready. I don't like Thready. My sister's like, you better not want Thready back, because it's like love. She loves Thready. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thready found love. Oystein joins us from Norway. Thomas is also in Norway. And uh, Vil Belkanen joins us from Finland. That's a country I hope to visit one day and go to the assembly conference in Helsinki. And let's see, we've got Ma Macedonia and Bar Israel Lewis is in Barbados, Sean Morris in Ireland, Mark Sims in the UK, John Young in Kansas. Isarian Art is in Missouri, James Hook is in Virginia, Chris P is in the UK South End. Carborundrum is in Switzerland. Div Divan is in UK. Will L is in France. W85 is in Western Australia. Andrea Z is in Sweden. Gerard Huff is in Germany. Carl Norman is in the UK. Andrew joins us from Auckland, New Zealand. Jay Tony in Alabama. Daniel Sprouse in Pennsylvania. Let's see, we've also got Belgium, North Carolina, Czech Republic, Kettering, Ohio, Belgium, the UK, Minnesota, Hungary, and Europe. David Gilman's contributed $10. Thank you, David. Oris Jeffrey the Great joins us from the Netherlands. Robert Halter in Toronto, Canada. Kwamrol Faruqi is in Sterling Heights, Michigan. I used to have a friend who lived in Sterling Heights. They had an in-ground swimming pool, which was pretty fancy in Michigan in the 1970s. I mean, most people in Michigan, if you had a pool, it was an above-ground pool. They had an in-ground swimming pool. Of course, now I live in Arizona, where practically every home has an in-ground swimming pool. And I hate pools. I'm sick of them. Where's Mitch going? Carrie, uh, you know, there's somebody else joining us from Pennsylvania. Oh, thank you, Mitch. I got to pretend like Mitch is here, getting me back on track. Scott Schro joins us from Pennsylvania. Music for All is joining me from the Netherlands. He says it's 2 a.m. right now. It is nearly 6 p.m. here in Phoenix. Shanaba joins us from Dubai and Andy in Massachusetts. Cop Watch Transparency in Virginia has contributed $10. Thank you so much. Uh, Lee is in the UK and Joseph is in the UK. Acid Drops is in New York City and Tony Wallow joins us from California. I'm trying to give everybody a shout out, but the list just like quadrupled on me. Kenny's in Louisiana. John Paul Bacon is in Washington. Super Marula is in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Wonder Woman joins us from Maywood, New Jersey. We also have Spencerport, New York, New Zealand, more from Michigan, Louisiana, Montana, San Diego. Beaverton, Oregon, Germany, Indianapolis, Indiana, Fort Smith, Arkansas, Netherlands, Arkansas. More from Michigan, <laughs> the name is D-Ice, <laughs> that sounds about right. And Minnesota and Boise, Serbia, and Puerto Rico, Vancouver, British Columbia, Virginia, Woodstock, Ontario, Richmond, Virginia, Charlotte, North Carolina, Baltimore, Maryland, Cocoa, Florida, Leicester, England, am I saying that right? Chicago, Central Texas, Lithuania, Warren, Ohio, Fort Collins, Colorado, Dublin, Ireland, the UK, Moorhead, Minnesota, Ontario, Winchester, Kentucky, St. Augustine, Florida. Va Kaliskan says, hello, Carrie from Chicago. Human, human, I can't take that, I don't know what that name is, from Macedonia. Um, Birmingham, Alabama, Ontario, Canada, Cadillac, Michigan. 
BB, Arkansas, New Hampshire, Kingston, Ontario, Croatia, Winnipeg, Canada, North Carolina, New York City, Estill Springs, Tennessee, Texas. Robin Taha says, Ubin Rachathani, Thailand, just bought Roboform five years. Thanks for the discount. Oh, I'm sure I am completely mispronouncing any names in Thailand. I apologize for that. Gabriel joins us from Costa Rica. Frederick's in Waukesha, Wak Wisconsin. And uh, Ray is in Oregon City. Mohammed Kaboka is in North Africa. Tyler Wood joins us from Idaho with the real BJOD in Fredericton in um, NB, Canada. NB. What is NB? New Brunswick. And then there's um, Scarsdale, New York. Bel Belafonte, Pennsylvania. Burrow and Furnace in the United Kingdom. John Burt joins us from Scotland, and, and we also have viewers from Greece, the UK, Ohio, Melbourne, Australia, Madison, Wisconsin, Berlin, Germany, Amsterdam, Rainbow City, Alabama, New York City, Charlotte, North Carolina, more from Michigan, more from Philadelphia, more from Canada, Ishpeming, Michigan, and you pronounce it correctly, Carrie. Did I? <laughs> Slovenia. Cleveland, Ohio, South London, El Monte, California, Hungary, Wisconsin, Texas, Oregon, Dorset, UK, in isolation, says Taffy. Uh, Italy, the UK, Warren, Ohio, New Zealand, W85 contributes 10 Australian dollars and says he's from Perth in Western Australia. Michael James joins us from Belfast and Richard Lewis in Vancouver, Eric Wilson from Dunn in North Carolina. Chris Ireland in Liverpool in the UK. Donald Strickland says hello from Fripp Island, South Carolina. And Director Random from West Virginia. Israel Ramos Rivera is in Puerto Rico. DK Lucas joins us from Birmingham, Alabama. Michael Dane joins us from Ohio. Terry McGill is from Melbourne, Australia. Terry Zanders in Indiana. Edwin Ojeda is in Sullivan, Missouri. David Gilman in Virginia. Michael Spangard is in Denmark. Vern Mohorny in, remember we went through this, Olatha, Olatha, is that right? Olatha, Kansas. Olatha, I can't remember that. I have, I have a really hard time with that one. Just keep beating me up over it, though. Seriously, I'll remember. Time Spy benchmark is awesome. Hey, and it finished. Look at that. I bought enough time. But I'm not done with the list yet. Peter Moore joins us from Sheffield in South Yorkshire in the UK. And Zero Core joins us from Montana. Robert Holzman says he's in Ferndale, Michigan. Well, that sounds a little too coincidental to not be a relative, given that I'm from Oak Park, Michigan, which is right next door. And that's where the Holzmans once were congregated in that area. So I wonder if Robert is a relative. Chris joins us from San Jose, California. Rick is in the Netherlands. Uh, Wante Vortex is in Michigan. James is in Birmingham, Alabama. Carlos is joining us from Caracas, Venezuela. Paul Martin is in Indianapolis, Indiana. And DJ Cloudy D is in Maryvale, Tennessee. Maryville. Mike Paradin joins us from Montreal. Miloš Sobolski says he's a Polish guy living in the UK. OK. Uh, let's see. Luis Trejo joins us from Guatemala. Mike. Michael in MD. Every once in a while, this the the um, chat screen uh, flips on me, and I lose my place. And now I have to scroll through and try and find it again.
Noop is in Flint, Michigan. John Mallory says hello from Maine. Awesome Arizona joins us from Fountain Hills, Arizona. XBN Beef is in Seymour, Indiana. Andrew Hurst is in Morecambe, UK. Gabriel wants to know if I drink coffee. No, I do not like coffee. I do not like tea. These are two drinks I avoid. I, I've tried them. I just can't. I can't do it. Coffee smells fantastic, but it tastes terrible. Super Mula says, did you go to Roosevelt? I think we're about the same age. Did I go to Roosevelt? No. No. Um, Oak Park is a very small city. So it really only has two schools. and Well, three schools. And those were the schools I went to. Um, Sergio Cochet is in Portugal. Christian joins us from Chicago. Maple Bob says, a few guys from Montreal in here. Oh, he's apparently from Montreal in Paris. Carrie, did you try good beans or just basic instant coffee? Well, let's be clear. Finding basic instant coffee these days is very difficult. Everything is Starbucks or Dutch Brothers or, you know, super high-end um, which a pretty fancy, well-respected place in Michigan in the fall when I was there called Madcap Coffee, which everybody rants and raves about. And um, coffee lovers love it. It's all still coffee to me. I've tried espresso. I've been to Starbucks. I've had Dutch Brother. It's all just nasty and gross. I just don't like it. Now, while I was in Saugatuck, Michigan, they had some samples of Michigan maple coffee that I tried, and I said, oh, I, I could totally drink that. It was the best coffee I've ever had, but not good enough where I said, I'm going to take some home and make it. But I could at least drink it. It was, it was called Michigan Maple, and it was a little mom and pop shop in Saugatuck, Michigan that sold it. It was really the only coffee I've ever had that I liked. And tea, forget it. There's just no tea that exists. It's just, it's just, it, I like bubbles. I like it to be sparkling, you know. I, I, I like sugar. <laughs> ARS Jeffrey wants to know if you can see the dogs. Well, they're, yeah, they're, something's going on outside. The dogs are going in and out. But when they settle down, well, I'm sure they'd love to say hello to you guys. So I'm going to try one more thing. So TimeSpy ran without any problem with the change of the RAM. So I'm just really curious now, because I can't let this go. Um, I'm just going to power the machine off, and I'm going to take the utility flash drive out, and I'm going to put Windows 10 back in. And I want to do a fresh, clean install of Windows 10 with... Um, with no updates, and I want to see what happens. Because it's going to download updates in the background automatically, but between then and, uh, let's see if I can get the boot menu option to come up here. Yeah, that's what I want, right there, okay. And it's, oh, it's about nearly quitting time here. So we're going to just do this one last test and then we'll wrap it up. The boys are getting ready for their dinner. Let me go through this process one more time. So we're just gonna hit next, we're gonna hit install. And then we're gonna go to, we're gonna erase all those partitions on the drive again and do a clean install and just put on the uh, Times by benchmark and see what happens. So we're back to Windows 10 Home and user license agreement should come up. Then it's going to ask if I want to do a regular install or custom. I always choose custom. Then I delete each of these partitions. And now we'll let Windows 10 go ahead and repartition, reformat, and reinstall. 
this happens pretty quickly now. It's not like we're having to switch out floppies. <laughs> and then we'll put the TimeSpy app back on there. <clears throat> we'll let Windows do its updates in the background. I'm going to run TimeSpy again, and I want to see if it crashes or if it succeeds. Kind of curious what difference that AMD chipset driver is making. I'm telling you it's important, and all I'm trying to do right now is prove how important. So far, the first thing I thought was going to fix didn't fix it. So on the plus side, we know that we've got incompatible RAM. Nothing wrong with this RAM. If I put this RAM in an Intel system, it'll probably be happy. It may even be happy in another AMD system that's a different motherboard. It may not be you know, specific uh, against AMD. Uh, it could just be the motherboard itself is not compatible. And that's often addressed through uh, BIOS updates for RAM compatibility. Is four partitions normal for Windows 10? In UEFI mode, that's how you can tell. If you have two partitions, then you're in the legacy mode. And if you have four partitions, you're in UEFI mode. So that only happens during install. You cannot, if you switch your BIOS into UEFI mode, you're not truly in UEFI without reinstalling Windows again. So just so you know, if you're in the legacy mode with two partitions and you want to be in UEFI, you'll have to do a wipe and a reinstall. Robert Rakovic has contributed $10. Thank you, Robert. Make sure Robert's a moderator in here. And while we're waiting, uh, there was, speaking of Maximum PC Magazine, they just did an article that I want to read to you in this latest edition here about the new Intel chips. And this is an article by, who wrote this? CL, okay, whoever CL is. And the article right here is about the new Intel chips. So while we're waiting for this to work behind us, we'll let that run. So just when you thought Intel couldn't push its aging 14 nanometer Skylake microarchitecture any further, it does it again. AMD's speedy Zen chips have left Intel little choice but to respond. The slow development of its 10 nanometer Sunny Cove parts means, once again, it's down to Old Faithful to fill the gap, now in its fourth refinement. Luckily, Skylake has proved its worth, and Intel's getting good at squeezing every drop out of it. Not that there's much juice left. Each iteration gains over the last by a lesser degree. Comic Lake first appeared last year, disappointing us by only being low-power U-series chips. Now we get the full-on S desktop and H laptop versions. Exact specs haven't been officially announced, but they are engineering and qualifying samples about along with enough slides and leaks to piece things together. There will be a full range of parts, essentially replacing the existing 9th gen chips with 10th gen, generation parts from the i3-10100 upward. There are a few upgrades. Every chip now gets hyper-threading, and there are a few modest speed hikes for boost modes, though there is still no PCIe 4.0 support. At the top of the tree, will be the Core i9-10900K with 10 cores and a base clock of 3.7 gigahertz, 20 megabytes of cache, and a maximum boost clock of 5.3 gigahertz. Now, this speed is thanks to Intel's thermal velocity boost, which makes use of every bit of the thermal envelope you have. This speed is not guaranteed. It's an all-core boost of 4.8 gigahertz and a max turbo boost of 5.1 gigahertz otherwise. And that makes the i9-10900 6% faster under ideal conditions and with two more cores over the current speed champion, the 5 gigahertz i9-9900K. <clears throat> it has a quoted TDP of 125 watts, but under load it can reportedly more than double this. There's a number of F-series chips listed too, and those are the ones that have had the integrated graphics deactivated. And early benchmarks have been mixed, but testing engineering samples isn't always reliable. We'll have to wait for stable systems and more reliable testing, which means when they do their own testing. 
Uh, let me finish this up. So we'll click yes on, oh, wrong mouse. We'll click yes on that. Yes on that, skip that. Uh, we'll skip that later, do that later. Continue with limited setup. All right, where was I? Now, you're not going to be slotting these 10th generation Intel chips into your current rig. There's a new socket standard. It's LGA 1200 with an extra 49 pins for power and I.O. More cores require more pins. Right now, we're on socket 1151. This will now be socket 1200. A new socket also means a new motherboard chipset. In this case, a 400 series chipset, the Z490 the B460 or the H470. These are all ready to roll. The motherboard manufacturers have been waiting for the processors. Apparently, the bulk of the Comet Lake, Comet Lake range has been ready for a while, but getting the fastest Halo version running smoothly has delayed things. It's the star performer that makes the headlines, so we've all had to wait. One easy way to be competitive is to be cheaper. Leaked price lists show Intel is sticking pretty much to its existing structure. The 10th generation parts will cost the same as the equivalent 9th generation parts. Some pundits say that Intel is planning a round of reductions, but we've heard that before and nothing transpired. It's unlikely that there'll be much change. Supply is tight, and if you're selling everything you make, there's little incentive to sell it for less. Intel will cut prices when the heat is on. It recently took a chainsaw to a lot of its server and X-series parts, thanks largely to Threadripper's growing market share, but it takes more than market pressure uh, than there is in the desktop sector for that yet. So expect the 10-core beasts to be expensive. We should see the new chips before the end of the summer, possibly even spring. Intel's having a hard time matching AMD across most of the market. But however fast Ryzen gets, Intel manages to make a chip that can, right at the limit, be faster. For many, that's all the reason they need. Reaching 5.3 gigahertz is probably pushing the design about as far as it can go, requiring trickery with boosts and quite probably liberties with binning and cooling. Intel will probably still make the fastest gaming chip, but on its back foot is just about every other metric. Intel's chip generations are clearly marketing fluff. This Comet Lake range looks suspiciously like a slightly overclocked set of 9th gen chips. It's better than nothing, though, and that 5.3 gigahertz figure will grab the headlines. So I thought that was a, a really good article, and I wanted to share it with you guys on the newest uh, news from Intel. I still don't like that white taskbar. It really bothers me. <laughs> Let's go back to standard. Where's it? Themes. Themes. There. Okay. <clears throat> so... All I want to do, I'm going to install the Time Pilot benchmark, which I remove this flash drive and put in the other flash drive. Oh, it's, it's not going to download any updates because I'm not connecting it to the network. I want to see what happens with no updates, just a fresh Windows 10 1909. And let's grab uh, Time Spy. And Mati has contributed $10. Thank you, Mati. You know, I'm not going to be able to get the updates to Time Spy either without the internet connection. But now I'm just curious. Now I want to see what happens if we just run it without any updates at all.
Thomas contributed $2. He says, ha, ah, I turn off all those same Windows features. That's what we do here, Thomas. <laughs> The Reverend John O'Toole contributed $5. He says, I'm in the high risk club, but being a nerd, this isolation is no big deal, right? That's what I'm talking about. We're already self-isolating. It's what we've been doing our whole lives. Have you ever tried one of those cold coffees with ice cream? There's nothing more disgusting than cold coffee. Like when people do cold brew, like it's, it's at least tolerable if it's hot, but if it's cold, it's just nasty. No, I'll tell you what, you can, you can have all the cold coffee. You can keep all that. I, I won't try and take any of it. You do not have to share it with me. I'm, I, I've learned more about coffee than I ever really wanted to know. Different stages of, of coffee, from instant coffee to uh, uh, the latest craze is pour-over coffee. That's like madcap. Pour-over coffee. I mean, these people go through these... It's like a, I was going to say it, it's like a drug addiction, but it is a drug addiction. It's a caffeine addiction. And to watch these people process the beans and put on the filter and, and do the pour over coffee to filter it through and then take that, pour it into another thing. That seems like a whole lot of work. I don't know. I just, I, am, I just can't join that club. Donna Hall's contributed $2. Thank you, Donna. MD White J says, thanks, Carrie just updated my AMD chipset Aorus B450M. Love your channel. Right on. Irish coffee, if nothing else, it will blow your socks off. Yes, well, putting whiskey in coffee. Okay, so if, if you have coffee and you put some Bailey's Irish cream in it, uh, I drink it. <laughs> Because it sweetens it, it makes it, it makes it taste a whole lot better. But again, I'm not much of an alcohol drinker at all. And tea, I've never found a tea I like. Teas are all very gross to me. Okay, so let me see if I can run this darn benchmark for once. And the dogs now are looking at me like, hello, are you gonna feed us? It's past our dinner time. Robbie wants to know, is there any truth to Windows providing a free operating system platform future-wise? Uh, nobody will say. Uh, industry secrets are just that. There's lots of speculation. And nobody can tell you if anything... Oh, this is interesting. It's not going to let me run. Oh, I know why, because we've got the Microsoft. So we're going to have to do the Windows updates, apparently. All right, so once again, I'm going to do the updates, but no AMD chipset driver. I'm just going to get what I get from, from Microsoft. Stealth Mode wants me to just do the GPU drivers. Well, here's the thing. I can't stop the Windows updates from happening in the background. They're going to happen anyway. So we might as well just go ahead and plug all those in. I just want to see if Time Spy will, uh, will crash or it will complete. Uh, with all just like basic default that a home user would do. A home user should be running Windows Update. A home user should be grabbing the graphics driver um, from the manufacturer of the graphics card. And um, a home user wouldn't know to install the AMD chipset drivers in general. That's the whole point of this. So while we're waiting for that, I can feed the dog. So let's do this. Let's go to full screen. We'll see if we can get these guys fed. Come here, boys. Come here. Are you hungry? Are you hungry? Is it time? 
is it time for dinner? Come here, Jimmy. There's a good boy. Lyle, come over here. Oh, you're so big boy. And Lyle's just standing by the food bowl. Are you ready for some food? Are you hungry? All right. There's dinner. Are you ready? Are you hungry? Good boy. There you go. Bon appetit. All right, we'll revisit them in a minute. They'll scarf down their food in 20 seconds. How are we doing there? Well, Lyle finishes first. So we'll let that keep updating. And while that's happening, we'll switch back over to, uh, we'll go back to camera one here for a moment. So those are the panels that go onto that case. I just got them down there for now. There's Jimmy. And let's get something here for the boys. Let's see what we can get here. This is from their bark box. You want some of that? Yeah, does that look good? Are you poking at the bag with your face? You think that's gonna open the bag? What about you? Nope, oh, there's two stuck together. You gotta leave my fingers this time. Now you'll get, well, this has three stuck together. Can I have a paw? Can I have the other paw? Can I have that paw? Good boy. There's two more for you. There's one. Hey, hey, that's my finger. What about you? Can I have a paw? Okay, you're so aggressive. Can I have the other one? Can I have that paw? Can I have that paw? Good boys. Good oh, boys. Okay. And then last two. Be gentle. Oh. Gentle. Good boys. That's it. That's all you get. That's your dinner and your dessert. You're done. See you tomorrow. Good boy. All right. That was click and bait, my dogs. One's named Click and one's named Bait. <laughs> Everybody loves the dogs. <laughs> and so they should. Yes, they should. Yes, they should. Good boys. And he's still looking for more attention. Let's take advantage of that. What do you want? Come here. You want some lovings? Oh, don't touch me. Come here. You're a brat. Come here, brat. You're like a cat. You're like, uh, I'll let you pet me when I feel like it. Give me your side eye. Are you giving me side eye? Oh, I want to get you. Oh, my God, you. I'm touching you. You got human touch all over you. I'm going to mess up your hair. It's all messed up now. I messed it up. Just straighten it back out. I'm gonna mess your hair up again. 
I'm gonna mess it up. Come here. Oh, you, Jimmy, want some lovin's? Scrub it. Scrub the butt. Scrub the butt. All right. <clears throat> there you go, guys. That's your <laughs> overdose of the dogs today. There. Okay. How are we? Wow. That was Lyle. You feel better? <laughs> okay. Uh, and we're still downloading here. What's going on? Yeah, it's still installing. We'll check back on that in a minute. The dog is like social distancing. I think you're right. <laughs> He's a good boy. So now Lyle's all lovey-dovey right now. Now I can touch you, it's okay, as long as it's on your terms. I can't decide, it's gotta be when you decide. Pretty sure you're part cat. You got cat attitude. You just decide you wanna come over here? Hmm? skin. Look at his skin. You got your regular ear and your folded ear and your brother, Jimmy Jimmy. I got your face. I got your face. I got it. Oh. Be a mutt. There, do your mutt impression. There, now he's a mutt. Okay, now be a Doberman. Now he's Doberman. Now be a Sharpe. Sharpe. Screwball. Screwball. All right. All right. Did that buy me enough time? Still installing. All right. I think it just finished the top one. And yeah, moving on. Oh, no, it's <laughs> still on the top. Okay, well, I guess I'm just going to wait a little more. Are you sure he's not part chow? Yes, he is part chow. Richard Angeline's contributed $2. Thank you, Richard. All right, now we're moving along, finally. Should have, uh, was that one last one there? Oh, that's all right, while I'm waiting I can wash the dog off my hands. Twenty seconds, Lyle. Okay, we're ready to restart. Perfect timing.
So we're just going to wait for Windows to restart. We'll hit Windows Update one more time and uh, get the NVIDIA driver installed and then run TimeSpy and see if it'll complete. If it completes, then this was a RAM issue the whole time. And I'll have to find another example, like a before and after of performance when you don't have the AMD chipset drivers versus when you do. Um, that, that'll be the gist of it, really. So it won't be as dramatic. It won't be like a crash that occurs, but rather uh, performance and reliability improves with the AMD chipset driver. So I didn't get the outcome I thought I was going to get, but that's okay. Eduardo Turan has contributed 50 Mexican pesos, says, I always updated the ATI chipset drivers from the AMD website on my old Athlon 64X2 and my Phenom 2 X4960T PCs, Catalyst and Overdrive overclock stuff. Yeah, I am back in the day. But Windows 10 does such a good job of providing everything you need. I'm just shocked that we're not getting the full uh, AMD chipset drivers. But we do see some drivers coming in from Windows Update, from AMD. So maybe that's changed. I'm not exactly sure. But clearly, the driver that AMD offers is newer than what we're getting from, from uh, Microsoft. But at least we're getting something. So I'm going to go back to Windows Update one more time. We're going to check and make sure we've got everything. And um, I think this is the last round of Windows updates. I think it's just two. John says, Carrie, my wife's laptop is a Dell with AMD. Should I check chipset drivers or does Dell do that? So yeah, um, I'm going to say it for the third time. If you built your own computer, then you're going to want to grab these drivers by hand. If your computer is pre-built, whether it's a laptop or a desktop, if it's made by a third party like Dell or HP, for example, then you will go to them for all of your driver updates. Dell. Like I mentioned on my Dell XPS 15 laptop, there is a Dell update utility in the start menu, and that's what I would recommend that you use. I don't know that all Dell computers have that, you know, depending on the age of it. So in a worst case scenario, you could always go to support.dell.com and put the tag ID, which is on the back of the computer or the laptop, put the tag number in there, and it will pull up all the drivers related to the specific machine that you have. And then, of course, uh, you can compare what you have with what's available. And sometimes it's obvious by looking at the date uh, of the driver. Uh, that gets a little more technical by comparing driver versions. But uh, uh, you, if you have a pre-built machine, then the manufacturer is who you go to for your, uh, all your driver updates. So on my Dell XPS, I cannot use the Intel driver update utility. It does not work. It'll tell me, for example, there may be a new Intel video driver for the built-in graphics in the CPU, but then it won't install it. It'll fail the install. When Dell provides it through Dell Update, it works every time. 
but Dell's version is different than Intel's version, and it'll always be that way. So it's hard to know, you know, how far behind you might be, but you don't have a choice. It is what it is. But you can at least keep it up to date with what the manufacturer offers. Uh, it doesn't generally happen automatically. On newer systems, it's, they're starting to build that in now. Like I say, with the XPS 15, uh, that utility will eventually have popped up and told me there were updates. Um, I have no doubt it would have done that. I just checked it manually and forced it, and there was like eight or nine uh, since the last time I turned it on, which was probably six weeks ago. So there were already that many updates in six weeks' time, including a BIOS update, which it just handled all of it automatically. Basically, you know, these, these pre-built computers uh, come from the factory ready to rock and roll. Uh, the drivers might be out of date, though, but the drivers are there. When you build it yourself, it's up to you to make sure you put all the right drivers in. So that's all. That's all this really is about. Um, I would very much like to be able to, to rely on Windows Update to provide all the necessary drivers. And in fact, you know, now looking at Windows Update and seeing those AMD system drivers in the list now, uh, maybe that's starting to happen now. And, and I'd be delighted if that's the case. So once we're done with these updates, we'll run the TimeSpy. Uh, well, I've got to download the NVIDIA driver, and then we'll run TimeSpy one more time and see if it completes without crashing, without me installing the AMD drivers manually. And then that's going to wrap it up for the stream today. In the meantime, if anybody has any questions while we're waiting for this to complete, I'd be happy to answer any technical questions you've got. I'll do my best to provide an answer for you. If you've already asked and I haven't seen your question, please ask it again. The chat can move by pretty quickly, and I'm easily distracted, so I may have missed your question, and that may be why you didn't get a response. Also, there are lots of knowledgeable people in the chat who can also answer your question besides me. Just about done with this update here. What laptop to buy? So things like what's better, what's best, what's the best value, that's, those are things you sort of have to decide. It's like asking me what tastes better. You know, everybody's sense of taste is different. Everybody's budget's different, how much you're willing to spend for a meal. So I might like something that you don't like. And so when it comes to things like which graphics card is best, or which CPU is best, or which anything is best. Best is very uh, subjective. You know, you can ask 10 people that same question and get 10 different answers, and none of them are wrong. So questions like that, I just, it's really impossible for me to provide you with an answer without really knowing you a lot better, knowing what your needs and budget are, what you're expecting it to do, and what you're gonna be planning to do with it a year or two from now. Things like weight, screen size, battery life, warranty, how the keyboard feels. There's lots of different um, considerations in a laptop that is just not so easy to just say, just use this one, and it just one size fits all. What capture card do I use and what camera? The capture card I'm using is a Magewell four port uh, for HDMI input, $900 capture card. The cameras are Canon A um, XF400 cameras. And all of that is listed in my Amazon story. If you look at the video notes below this video, it'll say, if you want to see everything I use in my videos from my tools, the Lazy Susan, you know, that I've got the computer on that spins, that this table right here that spins, uh, the screwdrivers I use, the cameras I use, the tripods, tripod heads, microphones, all that stuff is listed in the Amazon store. And it's another way you can support the channel. If you click on that link that takes you to my Amazon store and you make any purchase at all, not just of the things on my Amazon store. Say you use the search in Amazon to find something else you wanted to buy, but it was my link that took you to Amazon, I make a small commission off of whatever you buy. And those add up, whether you're buying something inexpensive or expensive, 
It doesn't change your price or your delivery or anything for you, but it gives me a small commission. And if everybody used it for making your regular purchases you make from Amazon anyway, it doesn't cost you anything and it benefits the channel. It's a great way to show support. And it's something I failed to mention earlier when I was talking about the different ways to support the channel. Uh, that's a great way. You know, and certainly if you're buying a laptop or you're, you're spending over $1,000 at Amazon, the commission on that is definitely worth having. Different items have different levels of commission, so it's not like all items have the same rate uh, of a certain value. <clears throat> but I can tell you that whatever the commission is on 1000 is more than the commission on $10. $10. So... Um, it's just another way to support the channel for things you're doing anyway. So once again, we're, I'm just going to grab the GeForce drivers real quick here. We're going to put those on. We have the GTX 16 series. And it's not a 1660 Ti, but it doesn't change anything. So we're still getting the same exact file. And we'll save that. We should have it relatively quickly here. Here we go. Start that up. Click OK. All right, so we'll begin the driver install for the video card and then run the Time Spy demo. John West says, thanks to you and the community, I upgraded my four-year-old laptop with a solid state drive, more RAM, and updated the BIOS, and it's much faster now. Thanks for your videos, and keep up the good work. That's fantastic, John. You probably, it's probably like having a new computer, because adding RAM and that SSD probably made that thing run faster than it's ever run before. And the BIOS update also certainly helps if you're running uh, uh, Windows 10, which I hope you are. Taylor wants to know if I like or dislike the GeForce Experience software. The GeForce Experience software doesn't do much for me as a creator. If I was gaming and I wanted to have auto tune-ups for each game, the GeForce Experience software will search your computer for installed games, and then you can click on whatever game you want to play, and it tunes the graphics card for the best performance for that game if it's in the list. For me, it doesn't really offer me anything other than tell me when new drivers are available, but it's a little annoying now because it keeps telling me about new game drivers when I only want the studio driver. But I don't have a problem with the GeForce Experience software at all. I just doesn't, it doesn't do a lot for me. John wants to know, does it matter which vintage chipset you are using in order to update the driver? You should always download the driver that's designed for your chipset. My new computer speaker volume is not very loud compared to my old computer. Is there any way to increase the volume? Uh, sometimes the um, audio driver for whatever audio you have may have an option for um, boosting the audio. Some have it, some don't. Um, you probably just need better speakers. Like I have a pair of Klipsch 2.1 speakers that will break the windows. I mean, they're really loud and really crisp, really nice tonal range all the way across. 
a basic $10 pair of computer speakers is sort of you get what you pay for. Um, and alternately, you could wear headphones. Headphones will usually sound a lot better. You can get headphones with a built-in volume control, and that can also help you as well. But just check your driver just to make sure that all your volume is turned up. Make sure your speaker volume on Windows 10 is turned up. Make sure that the volume on the speakers themselves is turned up. And make sure that your equalizer, if you're looking at the settings individually of different types of sounds, is also cranked all the way up. All right, let's try and run this benchmark one more time and see if it fails or passes. Here we go. Oh, I got to get the updates. Nunman says, I noticed when I installed a new AMD Ryzen 7 3800X, the processor seems to run hotter than my old Intel, 7, uh, Intel Core i7 3770K. The temps seem more erratic as well. Is this normal? Yeah, it's, as long as it's running within the operational parameters that it was engineered, uh, they are completely uh, a, a complete different design. AMD chips are not designed in the same way as Intel chips, and as such, their temperature range, they do fluctuate more in temperature and they don't get as hot. Their thermal junction is much lower than on Intel chips. So as long as you're in the range though, it really shouldn't matter. Like that, if you're not having blue screens or you're not having issues with the computer, it, the temperature shouldn't be anything you need to be concerned about. Hot or cold, it shouldn't matter. Um, as long as the system's running. If the system's crashing and you're trying to solve a problem, it may not even have anything to do with your temperature. So looking at it prematurely in anticipation of a, of a problem you don't have, I, I find to be unwise. I don't recommend it. So basically, leave it alone, unless there's a problem. If, what you're, what's, if what's happening is you're hearing your fans ramp up and slow down and ramp up and slow down, then it might help to invest in a better cooler. It's possible you didn't install your cooler properly. It's possible you didn't use enough or you used too much thermal compound. There's a lot of possibilities where that wouldn't be normal. But based on the information you've given me, I don't see any reason to investigate it any further unless you're having a problem. So we're going to try this. See if it crashes now. If it works okay, that means that the RAM was incompatible. Not that the RAM is bad, and I want to be very clear on that. This same RAM will probably run fine in another system, uh, e even potentially another AMD system, a different motherboard perhaps, even from the same manufacturer. It's entirely possible. So I might just do a trade with the customer, and I want to make sure the customer gets a like a two terabyte NVMe Intel drive. And that's how I intend to ship the system back. And they should be ecstatic. Because remember, they've never been able to use the computer. They, they built it and they, they purchased all the parts. They carefully selected their parts and they've not been able to use it to game, which is what they want to do. They want to game. They want to get to their gaming. And he said this all started, this project started in August. So I think they will be thrilled to pieces with an SSD unlike what they had. Nice NVMe SSD with these compatible RAM. Try and get the cost really low for them. Uh, if I can do a trade on the RAM, I'll just trade them even. Steven, if we're going 16 to 16, I didn't even check. Did I go to 32 on this RAM? I'll, I'll work it out with the customer. I'm going to make the customer a deal. So don't worry about that. I'll make sure that they're taken care of because I don't want to have any shortcuts here. I want to make sure when they get the system back, they're ecstatic. Brian says, I've heard that I need SATA SSD with DRAM for large transfers, which is best price performance. You know, for the most part, you're talking about seconds. And if you're transferring large files constantly uh, to in a solid state drive, and by large files, I'm, I'm talking like 
10 gigs or larger on a regular basis. Uh, there may be some cause for concern there with regards to performance, but otherwise, it's really just a matter of seconds, and I'm not sure going through the effort of uh, going down to the millisecond to your purchase to value uh, consideration is, is, is not a huge investment of time, far more than you will save, uh, depending on um, exactly how many files you're transferring and how often. I find a lot of people have ridiculous requirements. And when you ask them why and they tell you because I move large files, you're like, how big are the files? Like 500 megs? That's not a big file. How often are you moving them? Oh, like twice a week? Yeah, that's not often enough. The savings that you're going to get is seconds. And the price difference is dollars. I don't think that type of analysis is justifiable for 98% of the population. And for people who care about seconds over dollars, like to that level, um, I, they have more time than I do, ironically, uh, to do that type of analysis because it's just it's sort of an illusion because you're using your computer for more than that your operating system is constantly writing temp files on a virtual swap file and things like that virtual memory and all these other things are happening uh, browsers caching websites and so little tiny files are being written all the time this, I this idea that that one particular um, Solid state drive. What are you doing there, Jimmy? Oh, is there a cookie back there? This idea that a particular solid state drive is going to be better for everything, um, there's one answer for that, and that's spend a lot of money. Find the most expensive solid state drive and buy it. It can save a lot of time. A Samsung 970 Evo Plus for around $450 for two terabytes. Uh, and Intel has a uh, seven series SSDs that are the industry's best. So when you are fastest, I should say. They're also very, very expensive. And again, most people are going to see a difference of seconds, not minutes. The only way it adds up to minutes is if you're copying extraordinarily huge files every day, all the time. So, lots of things to consider there. There is a point of diminishing returns. Benchmarks uh, off and running now, so let's see what happens here this time. Taylor says, what sort of system do you think those 3600 hertz RAM would be good for? Um, pretty much any system, really. I mean, for the most part, you're not going to see much performance difference uh, unless you're using built-in graphics on most systems. It's not like uh, your Quicken file is going to open noticeably faster or your Word document is going to save any faster or that you're going to get that many more frames per second in Call of Duty or something. Uh, you might see a little bit, but just because it says 3600 doesn't mean it has to run at 3600. I would just run it at whatever it wants to default at and leave it at that. I have turned XMP on for customers and not told them, and then later asked them if they noticed a performance, performance difference or of any type did the computer seem faster or slower, and never, not once, ever as a customer said they noticed a difference. So I think a lot of it's psychological. I really believe a lot of this is psychological. Now on AMD systems, you're more likely to feel or see a difference with faster memory than on an Intel system. But if you really care about performance, you'll get a solid state drive. I'd rather see you have 32 gigs of slow memory than 16 gigs of fast memory. And, and I think it's money that's better spent. It's also going to be far more reliable, less likely to crash, and um, you don't have problems like I'm dealing with right now, you know, compatibility issues. There's our performance numbers on TimeSpy. It did complete correctly without downloading the AMD chipset driver, so 5528. Let me do one. Now I'm curious. Remember 5528. Okay, that's your, that's your job. Someone can write it in the chat room, 5528. 
And let me, let me do this. Let me go full screen here on my, let's go full screen. So I can, it's full screen for me, not for you. 5528. And let's download those chipset drivers. AMD chipset. Oops, typed it wrong. That's okay. AMD chipset drivers. And chipsets, socket AM4. I don't know, is this, it doesn't matter. It's the same thing as X370, X470. This is an X470, but you'll see I'm gonna get the exact same file no matter what I pick here. You'll see they offer a Windows 7 version, on, which they don't offer on the X570, which I think is interesting, since it's the same driver. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe because it's PCIe 4 and that has something to do with it. So once again, we'll download that. <clears throat> and then as soon as this is done, I will open the folder. Again, I don't have to extract it. I can just run it because it's an extracting file. And it will extract its contents into a folder, we can close these windows to keep us from being distracted. Now, when it comes to checking your drivers, like there's the power plan, the GPIO driver, um, SM bus driver, like the SM bus driver we got from Microsoft. So if I were to go, let's see, if I right click on the start button and go to uh, device manager, we can look at system devices. And we should have like the GPI, GPIO controller. This is version 2010. Uh, this is a completely different driver, but you look at the date, September 29th. And this date is the 3rd of March, 2020. Uh, SM bus, if we look what we got from Microsoft, is from 118, uh, the 18th of January, 2015, driver version 5.12. And the SM bus driver here is 512038. This is 512031. Not a huge difference as far as the numbers go, but that's one way you can check manually to see which uh, driver's versions that you currently have, if you have them at all. So at the very least, Installing these chipset drivers are newer, more current, and again, addressing security, reliability, and performance, as well as compatibility. So we're gonna go ahead and let those install, we're gonna reboot, and then we're gonna run TimeSpy one more time and see if we get a number similar to 5528 or very different. What would be a bigger number, lower number? Truth is, we can run TimeSpy three times in a row and get three completely different numbers each time we run it. The curious thing, or the thing I'm interested in finding out is if we're gonna be in a completely different ballpark of numbers. In other words, instead of, if we ran it three times in a row, we might see 5530, 5525. Five, you know, we should be in within a range of 20 points. If the range difference is more than 20 points, uh, that's your justification right there for the AMD chipset drivers to prove that there's a performance difference. So, because this is live and unscripted and I have no idea what's gonna happen, I can only tell you that's the theory behind it, that's the logic behind it, and that's what should happen. <laughs> In theory, if everybody always followed the rules and everything was as it's supposed to be, then we would see uh, a marked improvement. But it also doesn't mean that's the only improvement. So maybe if it doesn't improve 3D Mark, maybe it improves something else. Maybe it improves rendering time in AutoCAD, or maybe it improves um, the amount of time it takes Photoshop to do layering. There could be other improvements. Just running one piece of software is by no means an end-all, be-all, that this will work better for everybody. In other words, if it, it, whether this has the same numbers or it's 20% faster, it's only to this particular application. 
Another application potentially could be slightly slower, not likely, um, or it may make no noticeable difference whatsoever, but you still have the security concerns, right? So it's always best to have those latest chipset drivers. If for no other reason, then it's certainly more secure. Should also, again, be more reliable, and it should improve performance, but depends on what we're measuring performance with, what we're using it for. That's a, a big variable. So this is our last test, and after this, we're going to wrap things up. So I want to, while this is running, I want to give a shout out and a thank you to everybody who's contributed during uh, today's live stream. So Mari Yoel, Eduardo Turan, Richard Angeline, Thomas, Donna Hall, Mari Yoel again, Thomas, Robert Rakovic, Reverend John O'Toole, John Olson, Radio DX, he's contributed $5, is north of Detroit, Michigan, right on. W85 contributed uh, twice in a row there. Copwatch Transparency in Virginia. David Gilman. Copwatch Transparency in Virginia again. And David Gilman again. Stealth Mode. Tech 215. David Gilman again. And Copwatch Transparency in Virginia again. Andrew Dorset said, keep up the great work, Uncle Kerry. How's the Intel Skull Canyon Nook working? It was having some problems, but I ran the Intel update utility, and there were about nine updates and a BIOS update. And once I put all those in, it's been working great again. Uh, thank you to Wonder Woman and Mira Ora and John Wilson and Copwatch Transparency in Virginia once again. Uh, Mari Yoel again and David Gilman again. And Mira Ora again, Bubba2424, as well as Marvin Jameson with that wonderful and extremely generous $200 contribution, PC Area, and Space Lord, as well as John Dorrington, William Cregan, Nunman 1962, Planet Cryos, Ricky B, Samuel Ramos, Rick Rubisat, David Gilman, and Copwatch Transparency in Virginia again. Very, uh, very generous. You guys have contributed four or five times each during the stream. I appreciate that. Michael Dane contributed five dollars. Says, "Hey, Carrie, thanks for your Go Faster sticker. Have a Coke on me." Right on, Michael. Thank you. Sorry, I missed that earlier. Uh, Brendan Looney, and Michael in MD, as well as Planet Cryos again with a nice twenty-dollar contribution. Appreciate that very much. Melanie Chambers. James Jeffries, Ben Fitzpatrick, Rochester NY87, Carlo Destine, Jens Carlson, CC for Tech, Jeremy Kramer, Thomas Beckenstow, Glenn Davies, Mari Yoel and Mira Ora again, Joe Bush and Heinrich Anderson, and Mari Yoel and Mira Ora again, and Rick Hubbard. Amira Ora was the first contributor at uh, 3.34 p.m. with a $5 contribution to the channel. Thank you so much, again, for all of your support. I appreciate it. I, I love that I don't have to go to sponsors. I love that I have the freedom to do what I want and say what I want and not worry about either offending a sponsor or a viewer that is trying to cause harm to the channel to threaten a sponsor. You know what I mean? Because that, that, that happens to some people as well. So, um, Daniel says, so chipset and RAM was the answer? No, it appears just the RAM. It appears the chipset driver was not causing the crash at all. The RAM was causing the crash, but the chipset driver was still missing, or at least wasn't current. And that helps improve security, reliability, and performance of the machine. I thought it was causing the crash, but it's not, it was just the RAM. The RAM was not, the RAM is good, it's just not compatible. So our last number was, uh, what, 5528. So Mati contributed $10 and says 5528. Thank you, Mati. Thank you for the reminder. 
So what we want to know now after installing that chipset driver is what the uh, final number is going to be. If it's going to be 5529 or 5523 or 5535, you know, if we're in the same range, it really didn't make much difference. But if it's at 56 or higher, then that's a, a significant improvement. But remember, that's only on this particular piece of software. So whether or not we see a difference in this software doesn't mean we won't see a difference in any software. And just because if we do see a difference it also means we won't necessarily see the same type of performance increase with other unrelated software. So it's all variable, lots of variations. So remember 5528 is the previous results. Gary Tatum contributed $10. He says, great info as usual. Thank you, Gary. And um, I think I got everybody. I think everybody's covered here. Mira Ora says, I've got a first generation Ryzen 7 1700 with no overclocking and an ASUS RTX 2060 with factory overclock. And I got 7571 on 3D Mark just now. Well, 3D Mark makes a lot of different benchmarks, but I'm assuming you mean the 3D Mark Time Spy. So our number here is now 5605. That's nearly 100 points difference. It's um, what, 23 points shy, so that's uh, 77 points difference. That's worth a free uh, time and effort it takes to download the AMD chipset driver right there. That's a significant improvement for just clicking your mouse a couple times to get that latest driver, not to mention being you know more secure. So with that, let me just put myself back on full screen and I can do my... Uh, my show ending. So my friends in blue, thank you so much for, for, for being my friends in blue. For everybody who's not yet blue, I, I hope one day I get to make you blue. It's my goal. And for all the contributions that came in today, thank you so much. Thanks for social distancing. I hope I've kept you entertained and opened your, opened your mind up to some things to consider if you're an AMD owner. There's certainly no harm. There should not be any harm in grabbing that latest AMD chipset driver regardless and uh, shouldn't trust Windows Update to get that for you, or at least and that's true of graphics cards and chipset drivers in general. If you have an Intel system, I would also recommend the Intel driver update utility. If you're running a pre-built system, always go to the manufacturer of the pre-built system for your drivers. So for all the contributors, all my friends in blue and everybody who joined us, and especially everybody who participated in the chat room, which is just a fraction of the number of viewers we have. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will be back here uh, as soon as I can. Again, still working on a backup studio, so my time is being stretched thin. But at least I've got this system sorted now. I know what's wrong with it, and then I'll communicate that to the owner. The Amazon shipment for the SSD is not going to be here till the third week of April. <laughs> so I might have this for a while before I can ship it. But they're going to love this computer when they get it. So I want to thank everybody once more for joining me. That's going to wrap it up for today. I will see you all again very, very soon. Until then, stay safe. Bye for now.